All right, good morning, everyone. I will get started. I will call State of Wisconsin versus uh, Daryl Brooks, case number 21 CF 1848. May I have the appearances, please? Good morning, Judge Sue Upper, Leslie Basie, and Zach Wichow appearing for the State of Wisconsin. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Please state your name for the record. I'm here as a third party intervener in that matter, appearing as authorized representative for my client. I set for value and return for value all of the charging instruments in this matter and make my exemption available for discharge of all obligations and charges connected with this case. I do not dispute any other facts in the charging instruments. Record should reflect that the individual known to this court as Daryl Brooks is present in person in custody in street clothing, wearing a suit and tie and a mask. For the record, uh, I did not consent to being called that name, Your Honor. All right. And we and still have yet to address subject matter jurisdiction. Um, the court has the addressed record. it for the record. So we For the will record, be, has it been proven? Um, Mr. Brooks, I stand by the written decision that I issued in this case last week. A second what copy written decision was provided. Please don't to? interrupt me. Uh, a second copy was provided to you. I know you saw it because you tore it up yesterday. Um, so I'm not going to address it any further. Are you you are mistaken and wrong about the law that it needs to be verified or proven. Um, are you talking about the paper I accepted in return for value? So with accepted that, value I believe, value? Mr. Brooks, I'm going to continue with this trial, whether you believe jurisdiction has been proven or not. It has not. not been proven for the record. And it has. So it has that not. Detective uh, Carpenter was on the stand. And it needs and, to be proven. And I... Heard of prosecution. Would like to have him brought back up unless there's any other issues the parties wish the court to address from the state. I did want to address something briefly. Go ahead. Um, as the court knows from our short discussions yesterday, the state will be playing a couple videos of the defendants in his statements. Um, the court had previously heard those as part of a motion hearing, and I'm not sure if I'm really getting the defendant notice or what I'm doing, but I, I really tried hard. And I, I'm pulling out snippets from this because if the court recalls, there are a lot of references that the defendant makes to prior domestics with Erica, um, his prior record, things that the court had previously excluded. So I'm going through and I am um, pulling specific time um, ranges from this so that nothing that was previously ruled um, inadmissible comes in. And I guess, obviously, this defendant has the absolute right to cross-examine the witness. He has the right, and we've offered, and we have been um, putting exhibits up for him. But I do want it to be noted that I would not be willing to have Mr. Brooks just say, oh, go to about the seven-minute mark, um, because... If he even goes like two seconds before a clip that I had played or two seconds after, it could include information that was previously ruled inadmissible. And I guess what I would say to the defendant is the court has previously protected the defendant um, to make sure that things didn't come out. Where he asked a question that could be construed as opening the door and the court said, we're not going to go there, Mr. Brooks, and he got the message. However, with this, if there's any portion of this video that's played that talks about the prior with Erica, I do consider that that he has opened the door and I will be asking the witness about it. So I guess this is maybe more so directed at Mr. Brooks that if he plays clips that um, contain that information, he will have opened the door. He's had this video for weeks at least, um, this, these videos have been subject to a motion hearing. I'm not sure exactly what access he had to them before. I've reviewed the five hour video a number of times. I've been very meticulous in my timestamps that I'm grabbing out from here. And I am unwilling to have the defendant put Miss Gussie in a spot where he's kind of well, around this point. He needs to give exact times that he wants um, started and stopped because what happens is if he says okay can you pause here by the time he says that five seconds may have gone by which may be enough to some of these if I would play two more seconds than what I have here it would open the door 
So I just want the defendant to realize that this is kind of a slippery slope here and um, he proceeds at his own risk. And I'm not going to ask Miss Gussie to stop it at a certain time because I think something's about to be said. Um, that's on the defendants. Um, and if he opens the door, I can um, assure you, I will, I will go into it. Um, so I did want to put that on the record, Judge, not to be a jerk about it, but just once it's out there, I can't not address it. And if it's the defendant who brings it out there um, into the view of the jury, then I'm going to feel compelled to address it. Um, and then I didn't know if the court wanted to go through the preliminary instruction that you had provided previously on the interpreter. My understanding is that Mr. Marquez speaks very little English. Um, if you want to add the um, added paragraph, that would be fine for the state. We've had very, I've had two discussions with him and uh, I would not say he is, um, that English is a comfortable language for him. All right, thank you. As to the first part to what the state brings up regarding the redacted recording, I would remind Mr. Brooks, the court did enter some rulings previously. Why do you have to roll your eyes at me? Let's start the morning off on a good note, I didn't sir. I my eyes at you, so I don't think it's fair that you should say I rolled my eyes at you. I saw you roll your eyes at me. I'm not I didn't roll my eyes at you, so don't, don't do that. Well, Mr. Brooks, I'd appreciate a little bit more respect. These I would rulings, too, Your Honor. Let me finish, because now you're interrupting me. These rulings were entered by the court um, to prevent other acts evidence from coming in. But a defendant can open the door in a variety of ways. These recordings, and I have reviewed them previously, uh, do contain uh, discussion and statements by you regarding these other acts. And as you heard from Attorney Basie, she has all of the timestamps to stop at appropriate times so that the state does not run afoul of those pretrial rulings. You can open the door by asking questions, by asking for a video to be played, um, and not knowing those exact timestamps. I think it's important that I reinforce what the state has just advised you of uh, so that when you are watching the recording, as all of us will be, um, if there is something you want replayed and you want to cross-examine the witness about that you know those time stamps and then the state has graciously indicated they would assist once again in replaying portions of that video. I don't need a response from you unless you feel you would like to give a response yeah, to any of that. Um, with all due respect, they're the ones that want to play the video, so I don't, I don't understand how I'm the one opening the door. They chose to play the video, so. They're not gonna play the entire video, though. They're going to redact out, probably stop, fast forward, the portions that this court said would would be inadmissible so if you so for example if during your cross-examination of detective carpenter you ask the state to replay a portion of the video and you say go back to around the seven minute mark you have to understand that you may open the door even inadvertently to some of those other acts evidence coming in so what i'm telling you is if you want any portions replayed then or if you ask for the entire video to be played under the rule of completeness that you have an understanding that you would be opening the door to the evidence of other acts coming in potentially i'll have to rule on it at that time um, but so be mindful of the timestamps. I, I don't understand and your honor that that'll be that's almost like you making a ruling and then it, it not having any standing. If you but already made a the ruling. rulings against them. I told the state they can't offer this evidence. Right. They're that's the what I'm one. Saying. So if you offer the evidence or ask questions that would open the door, that's a different story. 
And we all have treaded lightly when you've asked questions that would have opened the door to a variety of witnesses. So the state's just simply saying, look, we're gonna do our job. We're not gonna put in the other acts evidence. We're gonna pause the video, fast forward the appropriate spots. But if you want any portions replayed, or if you ask for the entire video to be played, uh, then you do that at your peril of having those other acts evidence come in. So that's all I wanna tell you. Um, as far as the jury instruction, uh, do you have any position on whether that second, well, I shouldn't say second, it's the very last paragraph where it says, add the following if appropriate. Do you have any position on whether the court uh, reads this entire jury instruction 60 to the jury prior to Mr. Marquez being called as a witness? Yeah, I think the jury should hear whatever need, needs that they need to hear. Do you have a position on that last paragraph specifically, sir, given the information that the state has provided today? Last paragraph. It's in brackets and it's after a bolded section that says, add the following if appropriately. Advise the parties yesterday, we would be talking about that this morning. I mean, it was just stated that um, the witness doesn't speak very good English. And so that would, that would indicate that it would be a lot more work for the interpreter to make That's sure. That's not that what I'm asking about, sir. I'm asking whether you, whether you have a position on whether I include the very last paragraph of that instruction uh, to the jury. feel like that needs to be read to the jury um, I think it's pretty it's pretty clear from the from all the language leading up to that let me ask attorney Basie a question about uh, <laughs> the contact the office of the district attorney has had with mr. Marquez were you able to communicate at all in any way in English even if you would describe it as broken English Yes, I think our last conversation, we probably said, um, I said something in English, he responded, and then when I said something else, I think he needed translation for that. His primary, our victim witness person, um, specialist assigned to the case, is bilingual and she speaks to him in Spanish. All right, given that a bit of information provided by the DA as an office of the court regarding his ability to answer some, but not most. I think it's uh, appropriate to read the very last paragraph. Um, certainly doesn't hurt. It's not going to take away. So I will read the entirety of jury instruction 60. Obviously the part that uh, says read here if appropriate comes out uh, and then um, I will print that off and uh, that is what I will read at the appropriate time. Did that print, Madam Clerk? Wait quick question on that um, how do we know exactly what words uh, the witness will be able to understand in English versus that's not how the interpretation works the questions are in English they're interpreted in Spanish to the witness the witness will answer presumably in Spanish uh, and then the witnesses words will be interpreted in English and it's the English as this instruction says that is the evidence I think it's a little unfair that uh, prosecution has had conversations with the witness and I haven't considering that it's my witness they were on the state's witness list as well I believe so um, it's fair for either party to reach out and if witnesses want to talk to either party uh, in preparation that's frankly fair game so how, how would I be able to reach out to a witness? Mr. Brooks, 
You are representing yourself that uh, obviously poses some challenges and difficulties, but that is the state and stage that we are at. So with that, um, I know uh, we'll get Detective Carpenter on the stand. He can come up and be out here uh, when the jury comes out. Um, so come on up, sir. I will swear you in again, as is my practice when there's a witness on the stand for a second more, day. I have one more thing real quick. Um, well, it needs to be other than subject matter jurisdiction, it's, so what is it? You didn't even let me get to it. I said, what is it? I said, it needs to be something other than subject matter well, jurisdiction. Can I what get is to it? it? You can say There's no way to know what I'm going to say if I can't say it. Mr. Brooks, please tell me what it is you'd like to address. I, I want to address why my... Um, ICFs have not been addressed because I know you have them. Why have I not gotten copies? I've gotten copies of every other ICF. Why not the, the recent ones? Sir, I am not uh, going to be the intermediary anymore for ICFs that are directed to the uh, clerk of court regarding copies. That's not that's not explaining why um, I haven't. I'm even not the been keeper of the if, record. If so if there's something received. you want me to address, then you should address your ICF to me and not the clerk of court. Well, where is the where is the ICF? Sir, if I sent it, I should I be able to get a copy. I've gotten copies of every single one. You need whether to they ask were addressed, for that from the clerk. Whether of they court. were addressed to you or whether they were addressed to the clerk of courts, I've always. I'm not going to address told, that further, Mr. Brooks. I'm not going to be the intermediary when so you have the, questions to the clerk of courts. So, for what's the point of me sending them? the ICF, me doing what you asked me to do, and sending them, and then not being able to know if they've even been received and get a copy of them, which I've been getting copies of them ever since. If you did not ask for a copy of the ICF, they don't have any obligation to send I addressed, it I addressed it when I first sent it. I asked you on the record, did you receive it? Mr. Brooks, you said, I didn't receive anything because nothing has been sent to me. Well, so where's the if ICF? there's something that you need, then you should reach back out to the clerk of court. I shouldn't have to do but that But we're not going to take it. up court time regarding an ICF sent to the clerk of court. Again, I will advise you once again, I did this the other day, if there's something case related it needs to be addressed to me if it has to do with the record it needs to go to the clerk of court and it was because it i was am sent not to the clerk of court the but i still uh, should be i still should be able to be told if it was received and get a copy which you've done that before every single icf and i told you so i would no it longer be doing that sir because of this very issue it so takes you said so now time. it changes so now it changes all of a sudden? No, it didn't change all of a sudden, sir, and you know that. So don't no, try to no. confuse Does the record. Does it change all of a sudden? Because no, I've been getting copies of everything I've sent, which is what you asked me this to do. This changed last week, and you it know should, that. It shouldn't change. So no, I don't that, know it. I'm bringing the jury out, and I'm not addressing this issue, So sir. I want, I want the copy of my forward. ICS that I send. Um, send the request to the I don't have office. to send her another request. Where's the one that I just sent last week? All right, the jury is going to come out, so please be respectful. I, I will, but at the same time, you still have to, I did what you asked me to do. If you tell me to do something and I do it, and then now you're saying I, I'm not going to get a copy, which you've been providing them ever since, I, ever since you told me to do it. Mr. Brooks, the rules on that changed last week. No, no, it did not. I'm still supposed to be able to say if it's been received or not. So why should I have to send multiple ICFs to even know if they, they've been received? That's ridiculous, Your Honor. I'm going to give the parties the uh, final version of jury instruction 60, which I will be reading at the That's, appropriate time. Come on, you can't change stuff at the last minute. You no, asked Mr. me to Brooks, do something. I did it as a courtesy, you and frankly, no, you're not courtesy. I'm not. To me, I'm not so even. The jury's I'm not even coming out. I'm not even referring the record to should that. Reflect that the jury I'm referring is to the fact. I'm referring out. to the fact that you oh, haven't even Mr. had Brooks, enough respect to tell me it's be been received. To the jury, they're coming out. Okay, that doesn't that doesn't uh, mean that you shouldn't be able to tell me if my ICF has been received. ICFs that you told me to submit, you told me that. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will disregard the commentary by Mr. I accept for value in return for value this document, just like you've been hiding everything from the jury that they the need to hear. The jury will disregard. The court is not hiding anything from the jury. Yeah, yeah, you are. So, yeah, you Mr. Are. Brooks, please be respectful of the jury. They're and coming you should, out. You should be respectful we of what are, you asked me to do. You are addressing issues that are not related to evidence they in are. this case. You asked me to do Mr. something, Brooks, I'll do it. please. And All then right. now it changes. Everyone can be seated. Thank you. This is ridiculous. Just like subject matter jurisdiction hasn't been proved. Just like you're making judicial determinations that you don't have to Hold prove on. anything by law. Hold on. Which is attack and agreement. By you, Your Honor. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the, please disregard 
the statements currently Why, being it's made true? by Mr. Brooks. Why, because it's true? incorrect statements of the law. They, they are prove not that they're incorrect. Prove. In this case. Where's the proof? Where's the legal proof? And you need to disregard them. Because you don't have it. And we are going to continue proof. with testimony, Mr. Brooks. I warn I don't, you, do I don't, not interrupt. I don't identify by that name. We will have a name. discussion about whether you will continue to be here. I don't All consent right. to being called that name for the record. Detective Carpenter, please stand, as is my practice when a witness is on the stand for a second day to be sworn in again. Go ahead, Teresa. Please I'm raise your right lie hand. lie to the jury. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> and just for the record, please state your name for day two. Detective J. Carpenter, J-A-Y-C-A-R-P-E-N-T-E-R. All right, thank you. Go ahead, you may continue. You. Sir, yesterday when we ended for the day, um, we were at the point where we were talking about you interviewing the defendant, Daryl Brooks, um, on November 21st, 2021, <coughs> at approximately 11 o'clock p.m. Do you recall that? Objection, I don't think being called that name, for the record. Uh, objection is overruled. Yes, I do Grounds recall that. overruled. Not relevant. It is relevant. Your Honor, at this point, or I think last night, we asked for um, State's Exhibit 81 to be admitted into evidence, which is the defendant's statement provided to Detective Carpenter and Detective Stern on November 21st of last year. And Exhibit 81 has received permission to publish is granted. Objection. My um, notes reflect <coughs> that it's 25 minutes. That is correct. Um, let me get the exact time of it. Objection, I didn't provide any statement on the 21st. Jerry will disregard the statement by Mr. Brooks. He is not testifying, therefore his statements are not evidence. And my objection should be noted for the record. <coughs> Your Honor, the um, entire video is 25 minutes and 27 seconds. The state is, will be playing from 4 minutes and 25 seconds to 14 minutes and 25 seconds. Thank you. Go ahead. <laughs> so before it begins, I just want to clarify, we had talked about last night a little bit. Um, what we are hearing today is the audio interview only, correct? Objection leading. Oh, overruled is foundational. She may ask it that way. Go ahead. You may answer, sir. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, well, he said in four to six weeks I might have to get it because it's still something's wrong. I know, I know. You banging up before or something? Nah, just it was just the way they slammed me. Oh, okay. Hit the ground, kind of like went up. Boom, boom. That's where the knee well, came from. Knee but, as well. okay. yeah. yeah, but the shoulder, I, I know, I know something's wrong. Yeah. Okay. He said four to six weeks, the MRI won't be able to tell if anything's torn or anything like that, so. Okay. Okay. FBI, though, 
We, we help out our local partners all the time. This yeah. is just something that we're here to do. Because <laughs> I'm like, what? Yeah, believe it or not, we, we work at NPD a lot. We, we come down here, so we're kind of all over the place. Um, but yeah, like uh, the yeah, Parker like, said, we're... Y'all uh, for real? The FBI for real. That's yeah. what this says, at least, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. yep. I'm not trying to be funny, but this is the first time I've ever even seen an FBI agent in real life. Mm -hmm. Most We get that reaction from most people. <laughs> no, because it's like, am I in a movie lie. right now? Y'all sure y'all not punking or pranking me or something? Yeah. Don't yeah. Mind, uh, you don't need to let that yeah. freak you out or anything. Right. Again, we yeah. do work, so, so we work on a task force with MPD quite a bit. So I'm we a, are. I'm going to put my arm like this just to stretch it out. Just to, yeah. I don't yeah. want you to think I'm doing nothing crazy. You good? Just, you good? It leaves some pressure. Yeah. Something yeah. right up in. I'm, 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 no, you're good. Yeah, like she was saying, don't let the, you know, don't let, don't let them get all, don't let them make you nervous. Okay, um, you'll be talking to me mostly and my partner a bit. No, you know, they'll ask you a little too, but um, just trying to get to the bottom of everything. Look, you were found basically running around in the yard. You said you grabbed the dude's phone. That's no, I didn't grab it. Well, I, I, actually, I don't mean you stole it. You oh, asked for it. You made a call, and that's just kind of what I'm up here to start with and, and get the background about it. If you're willing to tell me, just what you're doing in the yard you know because obviously we have the perception we got like i told you you know they said okay they had us write this warrant get some of your blood but i have one side so what am i missing i'm missing the ralph side right i don't know what created all this why these people are calling us um and i can't really clear that up or i'd like to clear that up but the best way to clear it up is if you know you want to talk to me about it okay and that's just kind of what i'm here to sit down and and, and show with you about We've been been talking to you what, about four hours now, and we've probably pretty, longer. Yeah, it's been pretty cool. It's been probably pretty laid longer. back, so I'm looking to keep it that way. I'm not looking to to pull any fast ones on you. That's why I've been straight with you to that point. I'm going to keep doing that now, right? Um, Darrell, is it D A R R E L L? Do I have the spelling right? Yes, sir. And it's E Edward, like full middle is Edward, yes, right? Yes, sir. Brooks, B R O O K S. Yes, sir. Okay. And just verify your date of birth then for me. 1021 82. 82. So you're 39? Yes, sir. Okay. Oof. All right. Married at all? No. No? As little as I am, I'm like, you had to slam me. Yeah, how many kids you got? Three. Three? How old are they? 18, 14, and seven. 18, 14, and seven. Yeah, yes. what do they like to do? Uh, My baby girls, they are. They into everything that's going on right now. The TikTok, the yeah. <laughs> Instagram. Phone, right? they, they always dance and making videos. My, my oldest daughter just started high school. Yeah. And my baby girl is, she just started the first grade. So, yeah. so they my son like, is the oldest. My, my girls are the youngest. They can like build a computer, but can't normally talk like we know how to, right? Yeah. <laughs> so you're born in Milwaukee? Uh, actually, Detroit. Detroit? Yes, okay, sir. So Living in Milwaukee now? Yes, sir. Grew up here. Um, we left Detroit when I was maybe, I don't even think I was walking and talking yet. So, okay. Milwaukee's home, Wisconsin's home, born and raised. Okay. Uh, not working right now, right? No, not at the moment. No. What do you do when you're working? What do you, like, consider your job? Um, the last job I just had, I was working at, a, um, like, a sheet metal place. Okay. You know, basically just... Um, they would have like these uh, like hook things, like you just just basically it's strenuous because you got to do a lot of lifting lot of and lifting. it's a lot of heavy lifting. But you basically just hanging these pieces on these hooks and they're going through the thing, they're steaming them, painting them, then they okay. come back around and then you just box them up and load them. So you're not married? No. Live, you have a girlfriend? Yeah. You live with her? No. What's her name? Your girlfriend's name? Her name is Erica Patterson. E R. How did you spell it? E R I K A. P A. Yeah, P A T T E R S O. Okay, and it's 4014 North 19th Street in Milwaukee. Do I have the right address? Yes, sir. Is that an apartment or a house? It's a house. Okay. What's the zip code there? Uh, 53209. Okay. Um, and last grade you completed in school? 12th. Okay. Yeah. Graduated high school? Yes, sir. 
What school did you go to in Milwaukee? Riverside. Riverside? Yes, sir. Milwaukee Riverside tires. <laughs> I see you smile. You know about Riverside, man? I heard things. Uh, <laughs> we kicked y'all butt in football. Ah, uh, it was West Dallas. Oh, no. I don't think we played Riverside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So, yeah, I appreciate all the cooperation and all the good dialogue we've had, you know, to this point, Darrell. Um, you know, being that you're sitting here and you know, I had, had some handcuffs on you before and all that jazz, Absolutely. you familiar with your legal rights? Yes, have I have. you am. ever had those read to you before? Yes, I have. Okay. So as you can see, they're written on this paper. So because, you know, if I was sitting here and talking to you on your couch, we wouldn't have to worry about this. But because you're here and not in your home, it's just kind of a, it's kind of a thing I got to read to you, okay? And again, it's just something I got to read to you before I kind of get your side or hopefully get your side here and love to hear your side. I'd like to know what the rel has to say about, okay, you know, we got some people calling us saying this, you know, um, he said, you made an before. No, I wasn't driving. Someone thought you might have been. He had to get that warrant. He ended up calling a guy just to use his phone, kind of loitering around and just, you know, how you nah, ended up, how you ended up kind of being it. That's okay. what they say. No, 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 I was going to say, I, I, I knocked on his door to use his yep. phone. Yep. Yeah. Right, but it probably wasn't him that called because he had his phone, but someone was concerned about something. So just trying to figure out what's going on down in that neighborhood. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. All I right, would, Jerome. He kind of, you know, like I said, oh. I, I probably, that wasn't probably the best, but I was just like, I need is. to get an Uber. Yep. I have money on my cash app card. Yep. So I'm not trying to rob anybody. Sure. I'm yeah. not trying to break it in. And obviously you can tell I'm not drunk. I'm not, yep. you know, under the influence of anything. So. Okay. All right. Um, so he still didn't go to Okay. All right. Um, in regards to these, Darrell, then, do you understand that you have the right to remain silent? Just answer everything with a yes or no. Yes, sir. Okay. And then I just write down your reply. Um, do you understand if you give up that right, anything you say may be used against you in court? Yes, sir. Uh, do you understand you have the right to consult with an attorney and have an attorney present during any questioning? Yes, sir. Uh, do you understand if you cannot afford an attorney, one will be provided to you by the court? Yes, sir. Understanding the above rights, uh, Darrell, are you willing to speak with me, us? Primarily me, I'm the one that's going to be doing most of the talking, probably. Uh, I just want to know a little bit more about what's going on, just a little bit, because well, like I'm Like I told you, I know very confused. little. I just know that, you know, you were down in this neighborhood, someone called, you know, they didn't know what you were doing down there and things like that. So... I got limited from their side, but I'm looking to see, you know, what you have to say about it. I'm looking to see, you know, maybe, maybe a lot of, maybe the caller was just on some BS down there. You know, I don't know. You know, I don't know. But I can't, I can't really show the court that if I don't have, you know, if I haven't talked to you. So that's why I'm here, just to kind of see what you got to say about it. Get your side of it. You know, running around a neighborhood's not, not the end of the world. It's not a huge deal. Right, right, you know? right, right. Unfortunately, I wouldn't have had to do that if... I made better decisions with women. Yeah. But not gonna point the finger. Sure. I'm a grown man, I make my own decisions, so I'm not gonna point the finger at nobody. I just yeah. didn't think. Didn't think, yeah. yeah. What the hell? You wanna speak with me, Darrell? Uh, not right now. So was a decision made to speak with Mr. Brooks the following day? Being called their name, leading the witness. The objections are overruled. The witness may answer. Yes, ma'am, it was. Okay. Now, when you spoke with the defendant on the 21st, what did you have some general information as to casualties from yes. the parade? Yes, I did. What information did you have at that point? At that point, not all the information was in yet, but I knew, um, as I stated in previous testimony, um, our emergency department was very full. Um, I knew there were significant injuries to many people. Um, I knew some were deceased. I did not know the exact number at that time.
you had um, approximately <coughs> another couple minutes of conversations with Mr. Brooks before you called it a night. Um, was he, what was the vibe that you got from him during those couple minutes? Objection, I don't consent to being called that name. It's leading the witness. The objection's overruled, you may answer. I would say f friendly. I think when you heard the the clip there, um, Mr. Brooks jokes about Riverside and football. The individual he was talking to at that time was Detective Stern, um, as you can't obviously see him in the video. Um, I could sense, and I believe you can hear it in Mr. Brooks's voice in that clip, um, the FBI put him on edge. It was unusual to see them. I could sense the nervousness. He did transition as I talked to him more throughout that clip into a more normal conversational tone again. But when I was speaking with Mr. Brooks casually throughout the night, that was the type of tone um, he had with us. It was very friendly and he seemed, when it came to myself and Detective Stern, very comfortable speaking with us. Now you had stated your initial intent was to talk to him about loitering in the area <coughs> that he was arrested. Do you recall that? Objection, speaking to you. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes, I do. Did Mr. Brooks at all talk to you about the loitering in terms of what the focus of your investigation was that night? Objection, <coughs> I don't consent to being caught that name, leading the witness. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes, the statements he made in there, um, you know, about, you know, being in the area because he needed an Uber. Um, you know, he, he says more, you know, to us about not knowing the area of Waukesha. He, he doesn't know the streets, things of that nature, and he just needed an, an Uber to get home. Um, so, yeah, that was, that was his reasoning for, for being down there, and he stuck to that reasoning the entire time. Direct your attention then to the next day. So, strike that. That night, was he transported to a Muskego Police Department? Yes, he was. And did you go to Muskego Police Department? Yes, I did. Um, did you transport him? So it was a dual transport. Uh, Officer Leha from the Waukesha Police Department responded to Waukesha Memorial Hospital in a, in a marked squad car that has a, an, uh, an appropriate rear backseat transport compartment. <clears throat> Mr. Brooks was placed in that car and myself and Detective Stern followed in a separate car. So once you get to City of Mosquito Police Department, do you do anything there? Objection, Lee. Overrule. You may answer. Not the first night. Myself and Detective Stern stood by while some basic medical questions that were part of Mosquito Police Department's policy as far as holding a prisoner were asked of him. Um, I was there until Mr. Brooks was placed into his cell. Once Mr. Brooks was in his cell, I explained to him that I, me personally, would be returning the next day to speak with him more and give him more information about the investigation. Did Officer Leha end up staying at the Muskego Police Department with the defendant? Objection, respectfully to you. Overruled. Yes, he did. Why was that? Objection, D. Overruled. That was Muskego's request being Mr. Brooks was, although, so because of the transition and we did not have our own municipal lockup facility, um, we requested to use Muskego Police Departments and they allowed it. But being Mr. Brooks was technically in our custody, they requested that one of our officers stay um, there to do the monitoring and the jail checks. <coughs> So did you return to the city of Muskego Police Department the next day, November 22nd, um, to speak with Mr. Brooks again? <coughs> yes, I did. Objection, I don't consent to being called that name. Overruled. You may answer. Yes, I did. Did you return with anyone? Um, I returned with Detective Ben Stern. Now, what was the plan for this interview? You had said the previous day the intent was to kind of start very low, just looking at loitering. Um, did you have a plan going into the interview on the 22nd? Objection, leading. Overruled. I did. What was that plan? So the plan was different from the prior day. So 
the interview with Mr. Brooks on the 22nd didn't start till about a little afternoon that af that afternoon, 12, 11 p.m. to be exact. Around 8 a.m. that morning, there was a briefing with all officers that were involved where I learned some additional information. Um, one of the things I learned that morning was that there was a domestic abuse incident that had occurred between Daryl Brooks and Erica Patterson, something I was not aware of when I was with Mr. Brooks during the evening hours of November 21st. Um, there was also much more information at this point in regards to the parade incident. Um, as I had stated in my earlier testimony, it was very, very chaotic that first night um, between radio traffic and what I could hear going on down in the downtown. As I had stated, it was really unlike anything I've ever been involved in. But by Tuesday morning, the 22nd, we had narrowed it down to basically just Mr. Brooks, that there were not four people in this car, we were looking at one man. So he was now a suspect in the domestic abuse and driving in the parade. So I chose to begin the interview on the less serious matter, that being the, the battery charge that he was looking at with Erica Patterson. Now you said Tuesday <coughs> the 22nd. Um, <clears throat> Monday, excuse me. Okay, thank you. And, um, what do you try to do when you're meeting with someone? Do you, do you try to establish any type of rapport with that person? Is that helpful? Do you, how did you approach this interview on the 22nd? Objection leading. Um, I'll sustain us in the form of the question. It was actually compound, if you could rephrase. How did you approach the question of Mr. Brooks on the 22nd? Objection, I don't consent to being called their name. Overruled the witness and the answer. So when I began to speak with Daryl Brooks on the 22nd, um, I began with some very light conversation. I explained to Mr. Brooks that I had more information from the previous day. I explained to Mr. Brooks that his girlfriend at that time, Erica Patterson, had made some domestic abuse allegations against him that were physical in nature. I didn't indicate to him exactly what she said he did, but that there were physical allegations. Um, I explained to Mr. Brooks that there's always two sides to a story and that, you know, a lot of times in my experience as an officer, it, it can be about perspective. There's one, there's side A, there's side C, so to speak, and maybe B, somewhere in the middle, can, can be your truth. Um, and I basically just implored him to be honest. I, I touched on the fact we had talked extensively the night before about things such as him enjoying baseball, him having watched the Packer game, him having been disappointed by the result of the Packer game. And in situations such as interrogations, I think it's always important to let a person know that obviously I'm an officer, but I'm a human being, as are they. And you want to try to not let them see that barrier and feel comfortable talking to you. I think in any interpersonal relationship in society, there needs to be rapport. And I try to establish that before getting into the specific details of the crime at hand. Now, you said that you had a briefing prior to going back to the City of Mosquito Police Department? Yes, ma'am. Did you have, um, you said you had more information about the parade incident and also the domestic incident, correct? Correct. Objection um, overruled, his answer may stand. Next question. Did you know at that time prior to speaking with Mr. Brooks how many people had died during the parade incident? Objection, leading. Overruled. Yes, I did. And how many people was that at that time? Objection, leading. Overruled. At that point it was five. So did you confirm, again, personal information for the defendant? Um, before starting the interview? Yes, I did. Did you read the, or him the Miranda form like you did the night before? Yes, I did. I'm going to show you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 174. Now, is that the Miranda statement form that you completed on November 22nd with Mr. Brooks? Objection, leading. Overruled. Yes, it is. And what time was that completed? 12, 11 p.m. Um, I what exhibit is that? 180, uh, 174. <coughs> 174. 
And did you read that form to Mr. Brooks? Objection. What did you say? Overrule. Yes, I did. And did you read that form to him in its entirety? Yes, I did. Okay. I'd ask that Exhibit 174 be moved into evidence. Objection. Brother Missy. Exhibit 174 is received. Now, when we look at Exhibit 174, it says spouse's name. It says Erica Patterson. Do you see that? Objection. Leading. Um, sustained it to the form of the question. You did not ask the published. I did not. I just want to make sure that's what you were not looking to do. Correct. No. Okay. Thank um, you. There's a spot in this form that says spouse's name. Is that filled in? Yes. And what does it say? Objection. Leading. Overruled. The witness may answer. It says Erica Patterson. Did he say that they were married? He did not. He said um, that was his girlfriend, however. Okay. And he indicated he had children? Objection he did. leading. It's background foundational. It's the witness may answer. The objections overruled. Yes, he did. How many children did he have? Objection leading. Overruled. Three. And you read each of the five rights that are listed on this form? Yes, I did. And did he agree to speak with you? Yes, ma'am, he did. Okay. I would ask that Exhibit 174 be published to the jury. Objection. Brother Missy. The exhibit's already been received. Noting your objection, it's overruled. Permission to publish is granted. <laughs> now, as that form is coming up in the jury box, just for the, the jurors to see, um, when you initially had contact with the defendant that morning, did you verify <coughs> if he had been fed? Objection. Speculative. Overruled. The witness may answer. Yes, I did. And had he been fed dinner the night before, breakfast that morning, lunch that afternoon? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. Yes, he had. And was he complaining about any physical injuries? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. Uh, yes, he was continuing to complain about, <clears throat> excuse me, he was continuing to complain about um, the injury to his right shoulder, um, which he still at that time was asserting occurred when um, officers at the time of his arrest body slammed him. Now, with regard to the second interview, the one that took place on November 22nd, was that recorded? Yes, it was. And would it be fair to say that uh, recorded interview was four hours, 55 minutes, and 30 seconds? Objection, hearsay. Overruled. Yes, that would be correct. Okay. And you've had the opportunity to listen to that interview? Yes, I have. I'm going to go through that interview um, with you. I'm not going to play um, the whole five hours, um, but just portions of that. I'll stop it during um, during specific clips that I'm providing, providing to Ms. Gussie, and we'll talk about it. Is that all right? Yes, that's fine. Okay. Before you do that, I'm told our interpreter will be here momentarily, and rather than you start, I think it would be best if we just take a short break till the interpreter's here. Okay. Is the witness here? Um, I believe he was coming at 10. Oh, okay. No, that's fine. Then, then <coughs> I appreciate that additional information, then we'll keep going. Sorry for the interruption. Um, let me see if maybe he's here early. Okay. Yeah. Keep going and just let me know when the witness gets here. Okay, you can take this exhibit off the screen. If we can go to seven minutes and 30 seconds to eight minutes and 20 seconds. To eight. Now, before she starts it, um, is this the interview room that was at the same Mosquito Police Department? Yes, it is. Okay. And um, it's paused right now, but um, who's in that room? Objection, leader. <laughs> Overruled. 
The person in that room in the red t-shirt with the mask partially covering their face, longer braided appearing hair, is Daryl Edward Brooks. The same individual sitting to my left in this suit, jacket, shorter hair, and surgical mask. Okay. And the other two people depicted here? Uh, the person, as you would look to the screen to the left, is myself, and on the right is Detective <coughs> Benster. So again, going to seven minutes and 30 seconds. <coughs> but not with sound until seven minutes and 30 seconds. Go ahead. Okay. So it now is at seven minutes and 30 seconds. If we can play until eight minutes and 20 seconds. Hang the metal pieces on the, um, the little machine thing that comes around. They take them, they, they, the pieces go through like this little steamer type machine thing and then they paint it and then they come back around and we just take them off the hook and just put them in the box, load them up. Put back on the truck. Oh. It was four on, three off, so that was more ideal because that's a great schedule. I, I mostly have my children the back half of the week. Sure, but since since all this, I've been having them every day. So it was like, how old are your kids? Uh, my my son is grown. My daughter, my oldest daughter is fourteen, and my youngest daughter is seven. You said your son, oldest son's grown. How old is he? He's eighteen. Okay. They all live with you then in Milwaukee. Well, my son doesn't. Your son doesn't. My son doesn't. Okay. All right. So initially, what were you speaking with uh, Mr. Brooks about when he was describing um, doing something with metal? Objection leading, and I do not, not consent to being called that name. Overruled as to both objections, the witness may answer. Just about work, he was, uh, Mr. Brooks was explaining a job he had had prior. Uh, he indicated he was laid off due to the pandemic. Um, so it was just general conversation about his work history. Okay. And um, he talked about his kids. Um, do you recall that? Yes. And his two youngest kids, who did he say they lived with? Objection. The Overall. Objection. The relevancy. Answer. Mr. Brooks was indicating they were living with him. However, uh, the investigation showed that not to be the case. Uh, of the two daughters, one lives down in Georgia in the Atlanta area and the other lives in Iowa. Okay, thank you. Now directing your attention to 14 minutes and 15 seconds into the interview, and I'd be playing that until 15 minutes and 48 seconds into the interview. It is currently at 14 minutes and 15 <coughs> seconds. If Can you have those uh, timestamps again, please? Sure, 14 minutes and 15 seconds beginning to 15 minutes and 48 seconds Thank you. I'd ask that that be played at this time. Go ahead. We're not on your college debt. I gotta read it, okay? Um, and I know you've had you've heard it before, so you can't understand that. Yes, sir. Okay. Do you have any questions before I start for me? Only thing I want to know is, what in the heck am I being charged with anything? Well, she's making some, like I said, alleged allegations against you, kind of, you know, for being physical. So that's what. You know, if that's BS, that's what I'm looking to hear from you. Okay. Total BS. You know what I'm saying? And that's kind of, we couldn't track her down, so that's that's kind of where we're at. It's this typical back and forth stuff that guys like you go through with their baby mama all the time. And they're all, you know, there's a lot of guys out there in your spot. You know, <laughs> and a lot of times, you know, maybe it's it's not always fair to them. But that's kind of what I, I wish they had a law to where people, can, if you do that shit, you should get in trouble. Sure. Yeah. Like, why? You shouldn't be able to just be like, oh, I'm pissed off, so I'm going to yeah. call and do this. Yes. Right? That's, why would you put me in that situation and then you know we're going to end up being together anyway? And that's yeah. Why would you do that? Trying and to judge that but, credibility. Yep, yeah, and that's, that's total BS. So that's, what I, I'm, that's why we're sitting in here with you to try to, to siphon through, sift through the BS, if that's what we got. And just go for it. Easy, man. Does that make sense? Yeah. Huh. All right. Girl, man. I said this last night too, didn't yeah. She get drunk and she, remember I kept saying that she fucking acts a fool and I'm, I'm the one that pays for it. Yep. Can you tell the jury a little bit about this clip? 
So in this clip here, I'm just explaining to Mr. Brooks um, the background of the domestic abuse allegations that you know officers had received from Erica Patterson, um, and that I was looking to get basically clarity on that, his side of the story on that, um, have him help me understand what aspects of it may or may not be true, and um, just walk me through what had occurred between between the two of them. Again, although we're approximately um, 15 minutes into the interview, have you mentioned anything about the parade incident or any victims? Objection. We Overrule. The witness may answer. I had not said anything about that at this point. And why was that? So what I wanted to do with this interview, as I stated in my earlier testimony, uh, I wanted to start with the smaller things and get to the bigger things. Um, the parade incident with the injuries of the individuals and the loss of life was obviously very serious. Um, part of what I believe as an investigator is very important is gauging credibility in the, in the interview. And one of the ways you do that is you need to be careful. Obviously, at some point, if I'm going to take Mr. Brooks to jail, I have to tell him what he's being charged with. But I want to be very careful in giving too much information early on um, so that I'm not leading him so that I'm not giving him the opportunity based on information to create lies. Um, I want to see how he reacts to things to help me gauge whether he's being truthful. And I found starting with the smaller aspect and seeing how truthful he was with that could help lead me into the more serious allegations and see if he was going to be truthful about those things as well. Now, as I watched the, the snippet of the video that we showed, at one point you had indicated, you know, guys like you get you know get into these kind of situations with girls like that or something to that effect Do you recall that interaction in this video yes I do what do you mean by that or what were strike that what were you trying to establish by making that statement again with as I had stated in my earlier testimony part of what I believe is important is simply building a rapport with an individual again you always have with any individual and in any interrogation um, there's the natural barrier that can occur with them seeing you as a law enforcement officer. Um, I've been doing this job for 18 years. Um, that was not intended on any way upon my part to suggest to Mr. Brooks that everything his girlfriend was saying was a lie. I just wanted him to feel comfortable telling me the truth, whatever that truth was, um, man to man or person to person, human being to human being. Lying. Um, directing your attention to um, 30 minutes and 26 seconds and playing this clip until 40 minutes and 30 seconds. Um, let's do that now. Objection. Um, wasn't it just said we was 15 minutes in the interview? Why is it playing from 30 minutes? Um, your objection is noted. It's overruled. Again, that's 30, 26, you said? 30, 26 to 40, 30. To 40, 30. Now, what brought you to Waukesha yesterday? How did you get out here? I was meeting up with a friend to watch the Packer game. Okay. That's the only reason why I was, was out here. Where did you go to watch the game? To a friend named uh, Stephanie. Her house, a bar? Or? A house. And, yeah, I don't mean to make you uncomfortable or anything, but what's the address there? What's your I have on no street? idea about what we saw. I don't know the street. What was I it near? Know. I know you had to see something near it. Uh, so what was it near? Like a gas station. Have you been to the house before? No. Never before? No. What's Stephanie's last name? I have no idea. <laughs> I have uh, no idea. When did you guys set this up? Um, maybe a couple of days ago. Okay. Like I said, I, I have a few friends. I have a few friends in Milwaukee that have people out here, so. Okay. 
It's not. I don't, like I said last night, I don't know the streets in Waukesha. It's not where I usually hang out at, so I, I couldn't say, well, this street, this street, and this, you know, I couldn't. Right. Does it feel like a friend of yours or like a friend of a friend? A, a friend of a friend, a mutual okay. friend. And what share your last like, name was? I have no idea. How long have you known her? That was my first time meeting her. So. How did you get the number to know the house to go to? A friend. A friend. <laughs> so, how did you get to her house? My friend. I went with my friend. Okay, who's that? Uh, my friend. I don't really want to say his name. I don't know if that's going to incriminate him in anything. So. Okay, so let's go with this. How did you come? I know you saw Erica yesterday in Waukesha talk to her. Now, I don't know everything that went on, and I'm not saying I believe everything she told the other officers. How did you come to meet with her in Waukesha, one? And two, you say you don't know Waukesha, but where did you meet her? A gas station, a park? I know you met her. Where did you meet her? What what happened yesterday? Because yeah, so, if this is BS, like you say, and I know you met her, what happened? I met so her. What happened when you met her? Where did you meet her? Let's start with that. By a gas station. Okay. I don't know <laughs> what I was supposed to be getting some money from her. How did, okay. For what? Um, it was the rest of my money that she had of mine that she was holding for me. Okay, how much? Um, it was supposed to be $350. Okay. And what did she, why did she have it? Why, why was she holding well, she, it? She she had been holding it for me for a few weeks now. But like I said, I hadn't seen her. She had seen right. my mom. Right, why, why did she have it? Why was she holding it for you? She was just holding it for me because I told her to hold it for me. But this was, it didn't have anything to do with, this was weeks ago she had been holding the money. And because I had no contact with her, I couldn't tell her. And my mom wasn't going to let her come to the house to bring it. Mm -hmm. And I told her, look, man. If I'm going to be out there, I'll meet up with you and, and get the money, but I'm not hanging out with you. I'm not having sex with you. And she was just like, oh, you want to kick? I'm like, I'm not going to do none of that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I'm not supposed to be around you. I get that. I understand that. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I'm not supposed to be around you. I love you to death, man. Hey, you're my baby mama. I'm not going to, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't supposed to be like, a hangout thing. I told her, I'm like, I'm out here. And she's like, oh, where you at? Where you at? Where you at? And I'm like, look, I'll meet up with you to get the money and, you know, give you a hug or whatever. But she was like, well, yeah, I need something. I'm like, no, we can't do it all, all that. I'm not going to have sex with you. I'm not going to hang out with you or none of that. All right. So you told her you weren't, you weren't going to do any of that stuff. No. How did you set the meeting up? Did you, did you talk to her on the phone, Facebook Messenger, text message? I talked to her. She, I don't think she said anything about that. So just, I mean, if she's BS, how did you? How did yeah, because I didn't. With her? I didn't. She. This is what she does. If well, she hold on one second. Hold on one thing at a time. How did you set the meeting with her? How do I verify? That's what. It? That's what I'm saying. She. If she can't get in touch with me, that's what she'll do. She'll go to social medias and do all this and try to okay. talk to people and all this and that. I got in contact with her through a mutual friend that we both know. And I was like, okay, tell her I'm out in Waukesha or whatever, and I meet up with her to get the money. And then she put us on the call. And she was just like, where you at? Wait, call? Yeah. And she was just like, where you at? I'm like, look, I don't know where I'm at. Do you still got that money? She's like, yeah, I want to give you the money, and I want to, I want to do this and do that. I'm like, no, I'm not gonna have, I'm not gonna hang out with you. I'm gonna meet up with you, get the money, give you a hug and kiss. We'll talk later. Was it still daylight? It was still daylight. It was still okay. daylight. So was, after the fact, this was, I think the game was still on. Yeah, it was on. So the game was still on. Left Stephanie used to go. Yep. Oh, the game was still on. So I was like, fuck it. You know what I mean? I want to see you. I ain't seen you in like a month. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not going to lie and say, man, that's my baby mama. I love this woman. But I can't hang out with you. I can't so, do anything with you, you know, that type of thing, deal, and whatever the case may be. But 
Yeah. That. And this is on your cell phone? You, the three-way call, obviously, it's your cell phone because you're not no, home, I mean, right? My friend's phone. Friend's phone. Yeah. But yesterday, so do you have your phone? No. That's what I'm saying. No. So who is the friend whose phone you were using to talk to at her on a three-way call? I don't want to say his name because I don't want to. Okay, I guess. So you saw her, though. Right? You met up with her. Okay. So how did the conversation with her end? With me walking off and her being pissed off that I didn't want to hang out with her. I said, look, I'm not supposed to be around you. I'm gone. When she said, car did you use to get out she there? said, I didn't, I didn't have a car. No, whose car did you use to get to Walker Show? My friend, my friend is the one that said he was going to go hang out and watch the Packer game. I said, I'm going to go with. Okay. Whose car did you use to get out to Walker Show? I didn't use anybody's car. Where does your friend live? That my friend lives in Milwaukee. So you, you didn't walk to Walker Show. Whose car no, did you guys use to get out friend, to My friend, I just said. What type of car did you I... I'm just trying to figure out how you got here. Yeah, I know, but it seemed like you trying to, like, spin me up or something. Like, I'm just asking how you got here. Whose car did you drive out here? I didn't drive at all. <laughs> Whose car did you come out here in? My friend. Okay, right. What kind of car is it? So here's the thing, Darrell. Okay. Um, obviously, you know, she's coming at us. I told her she's talking about some domestic-related issues, okay? Um... You know, and I don't know if she's on BS. I don't know if she's not. I'm telling Hold you. Hold on, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. I don't want you to get... Yeah, because you know... Hold on, let me finish. You know, I don't entirely know all that, okay? I'm just right now trying to figure out how you get out here. So I got to step out with my partner for a minute. Just relax. Don't, I don't want you to get you all nervous, okay? But... You know, I'm not trying to be confrontational, but I, I don't think when you meet her out in Waukesha and you're not from Waukesha, I think a reasonable question is to ask, how did you get out here? Yeah. Whether you drove, someone else drove, and if so, when you got out here, what type of car you were in? So just um, every hour or so, my boss, he knows we're out here. I just got to call him and say, yeah, we're talking. I'll call you back later. Just got to step out, throw in a line with him, and we'll come back. Just chill out here, enjoy your soda. We'll be right back. All right? Sound good? Okay. So we... Done talking or no? No, no, no. Just chill out. We'll be back. We'll be back. I just gotta make that call. So I just gotta make that call. That check-in call. All right. In the middle of the conversation. Well, do you want to tell me about the car? Just go another couple minutes. Yeah, but I'm. I'm I mean, just, I gotta call him. I can come back, but I just. All up. Listen, I'm. I'm willing to listen, Carpenter. You been straight up with me. You been straight up with me, right? All I'm saying is, I just want to know what I'm looking at and if I can just notify my girls. That's it. I don't have a problem with talking to you guys at all. I just want to know what am I looking at. That's I it. At the start, she called about some domestic abuse-related stuff. Now, I didn't talk to her myself. I told you that at the start. You said she was crazy. We talked about Y'all know that. Y'all talked yeah. to the woman. No, I didn't. I didn't. Oh, Other I apologize. You talk. Slow down, officers. That we listen to the interview. Slow down, Did, did she look beat up? Did she be, like, dude, Darrell? Like, come on me. now, man. Slow down, dude. All right. We can't explain it to you if you keep talking over us. You know what I'm saying? All right. I didn't talk to her. I didn't see her. Okay. Now. Okay. With regard to that clip, sir, um, we. We have a lot of talk about her, meeting her. Who, who is her? Objection leading. Overruled. The her in this case is Erica Patterson. So you, did you have some conversations with Mr. Brooks before this clip about his relationship with Ms. Patterson? Objection leading. I do <laughs> consent to be in court that name. The objections are overruled. The witness may answer. Yes, I did. Okay. Now, at the end of this video, um, not the end of the video, but the end of this clip. Again, he is saying, what am I looking at? Do you recall him saying that in this video? Objection leading. Overruled. Yes, I do. Was this a theme throughout this five-hour video? Objection leading. 
overruled the witness may answer. Yes, it was. Did he, you had stated initially when he came into the room, he had complained about some shoulder pain? Yes, he did. Did that continue throughout the interview? Objection, really, I see. Overrule, the witness may answer. So, I would say what happened is it went on and off. So at this point here, um, the interview at this point in time was what I would describe as laid back. Um, a lot of it was simply getting background about the overall relationship between Mr. Brooks and Ms. Patterson. Um, during that time, he was fine. Um, he was moving his arms, as you could see in this clip. He wasn't complaining about pain. Um, what I noticed and made me question the legitimacy of the injury before ever actually even seeing the body cam is I noted at times of stress later in this interview as I continue to push on a vehicle um, I can see as you could see here I believe it can be seen here in this interview talking about the car made him uncomfortable complaints about the pain would suddenly come back how about the uh request to be told what he's looking at. Did you see any correlation between that and what was occurring during the interview? Objection, speculative. Overruled the witness may answer. Yes, that, um, as I say, that continued throughout the entirety of the interview and you know, really at this point was a little unusual because um, right now he had been told he was looking at the domestic. The parade hadn't come up, so uh, a reasonable person, I believe, at this point of the interview knew what they were looking at. They were looking at a domestic abuse incident. Um, why simply asking him how he got out here as far as transportation made him nervous was um, alarming. An example of him, you said that you had seen him using his arms a little bit in this clip, is that correct? Objection, leading. Sustain us to the form of the question. Um, you had stated that, um, what observations did you make during this clip about the use of his right arm? He would move it from side to side, so, I mean, both his arms would come out like this and move. Um, he would make mannerisms when he was speaking with both arms that were, to me, what a person would do when they're normally conversing. And um, it would seem unusual to make those movements if he was, in fact, in as much pain as he was claiming to us he was in. Now I'm going to just for the, let the record reflect that um, when you had indicated he would move his arms this way, you moved both your right and left arm out um, parallel to the ground at about shoulder level, would that be accurate? Yes, it would. Okay. I'm gonna show you a clip beginning at 52 minutes and 15 seconds <coughs> to 52 minutes and 42 seconds, so a very short clip. Go ahead. That, and then she makes this complaint when she gets you back. Yeah, and it's and like, why do you do this to me? And, and I, I promise you, I promise you, my right hand to God Almighty on the throne with Jesus next to his side. The woman is going to sit up there and say, I was drunk, I was mad, blah, 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 blah. But it's like, now I got to go through everything just for you to do that. Why did you do this to me? So you think she's going to come back to us? So we saw some motions with his <laughs> arms during this clip. Would that be an accurate statement? Jason, relevancy. Overrule the witness may answer. Could you explain to the jury what you observed? So I observed uh, Mr. Brooks move his arms to his side, above his head, um, his right arm almost fully above his head at points. Um, quite frankly showing that arm seemed to have full range of motion. Now you had testified yesterday um, you had seen 
a video or a still shot from a video and you identify the defendant driving a red SUV. Do you recall that testimony? Objection leading. Um, Overall, the witness may answer. Yes, I do. Okay. And when the defendant was telling you about his friend bringing him out in a tan Kia, I think he said, um, did you believe that to be true? Objection. Um, sustained. It's for the jury to determine credibility. Did the you? will not answer that. Did you ever see any video of the defendant driving in a tan Kia during the time of the parade? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. The witness may answer that. No, I did not. Directing uh, the video to one hour, four minutes, 30 seconds, <coughs> and playing until one hour, 18 minutes, and two seconds. Before we go to this clip, I know we have the witness, I've been told, and the interpreter uh, available. So I would like to uh, put further testimony and watching of these clips on hold. <coughs> Um, we do need to take a witness out of order in order to accommodate the interpreter that the court has arranged for. So, Detective Carpenter, you may uh, be excused momentarily. <coughs> and then if Mr. Ryan would accompany the witness, this will be Mr. Uh, Juan Marquez being called by Mr. Brooks. Yeah, Jen, can we? When you get there, um, we're going to have the interpreter sworn first. Do you swear that you will interpret truly, accurately, completely, and impartially in accordance with the standards prescribed by law, the Code of Ethics for Court Interpreters, and Wisconsin Guidelines for Court Interpreting? I do. Certified Spanish Interpreter Patrick Ryan. Thank you. And Mr. Marquez, would you please raise your right hand to be sworn by my clerk? Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Say. Yes. Please have a seat. Come sit there, por favor. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I have an instruction to read to you. No matter what language people speak, they have the right to have their testimony heard and understood. You are about to hear a witness in which an interpreter will translate for one of the witnesses. The interpreter is required to remain neutral. The interpreter is required to translate between English and Spanish accurately and impartially to the best of the interpreter's skill and judgment. The evidence you are to consider is only that provided through the official court interpreter. Although some of you may know the non-English language used, it is important that all jurors consider the same evidence. Therefore, you must base your decision on the evidence presented in the English translation. You must disregard any different meaning of the non-English words. You must evaluate interpreted testimony as you would any other testimony. That is, you must not give interpreted testimony any greater or lesser weight than you would if the witness had spoken English. Keep in mind that a person might speak some English without speaking it fluently. That person has the right to the services of an interpreter. Therefore, you shall not give greater or lesser weight to a person's translated testimony 
based on your conclusions, if any, regarding the extent to which that person speaks English. With that, sir, the first thing I will ask you to do is to state and spell your first and last names for the record. Juan Marquez. Juan Marquez. Rota U A N J U A N M A R Q U E Z M A R Q U E Z. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. You may question this witness. Uh, good morning, Mr. Marquez. You were at the parade on November 21st, 2021, is that correct? That is correct. And do you recall who you were there with that day? With my wife and with my son. And were you marching in the parade that day? Sí. Yes. Do you remember who you were marching with? Sí, Was it a uh, particular group? Un grupo particular? Sí. Yes. Do you recall who that group was? Sí. Yes. And at some point, you felt something hit your leg? That's correct. That's correct. And do you remember what that was? A vehicle. And did you see the vehicle? No. No. At some point, did you uh, go to Freighter Hospital? In a moment, you stepped aside and looked at Freighter. Sí. Yes. And were you inter interviewed by any law enforcement at that time? Sí. Yes. And do you remember who you were with at that time? Do you recall if it was uh, regular officers or FBI? Se acuerda si fue un oficial regular o fue la gente de FBI. 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 Do you recall telling them that the truck was black? Se acuerda que usted grounds. Um, the objection is sustained as to leading. Please rephrase your question. Do you remember what color you told them the truck was? Se acuerda si usted se acuerda qué color dijo él que que no recuerdo. I don't remember. So it would be fair to say you don't recall seeing anything at that time? Se puede decir que usted no se acuerda de nada en ese tiempo? No. No? And did you at any time file a claim related to this incident? En algún momento usted ha hecho un reclamo con respecto a este incidente? No recuerdo. I don't remember. Do you know if anyone you were with filed a, a claim related to this incident? Sí, alguien con el alguien que la acompañó 
si ha hecho un reclamo con respecto a este incidente? No lo sé. I don't know. Would you consider yourself an injured party in this incident? Usted se considera una una parte herida lesionada debido a este incidente. Sí. Yes. Any reason why you wouldn't file a claim since you considered yourself an injured party? Por eso que usted grounds se considera una persona no herida durante ese incidente. ¿Alguna razón por la cual no archivaría un reclamo? There's an objection. It's sustained as to the form of the question. Please rephrase. Por favor, diga la pregunta de nuevo. ¿Me puede repetir la pregunta? There's an objection. You don't need to answer. No tiene que contestar. Could you repeat the question, please? Please rephrase, Mr. Brooks. Por favor, diga la pregunta de diferente manera, señor Brooks. It's kind of hard to rephrase. Did you intend on uh, filing a claim related to this case? Objection. Hold on, there's been an objection. The ground. Your Honor, first of all, I, this witness testified he doesn't recall filing a claim, so I'm not sure what the relevance then would be of the question. The question was, did he intend to? I'll sustain the objection as to the form of the question. Please rephrase. Do you recall at any time filing a police report? Se acuerda un momento usted de archivar un reporte de policía. Sí. Yes. And was that with local law enforcement? If you recall. La gente de policía local. ¿Sí se acuerda? No recuerdo. I don't remember. Did anyone? Did any law enforcement? From that report, follow up with you at any time. Alguna representante de una agencia policiaca hizo algún tipo de seguimiento con usted en ese tiempo. Sí. Yes. And do you recall what agency that was? ¿Se acuerda qué agencia lo contrató? No. No. Do you recall at any time being notified that you could possibly testify in this incident? Usted se acuerda que en un momento que la notificaron que en un momento usted podría testificar sobre ese incidente. ¿Me puede repetir la pregunta? Could you repeat the question? Sure. Um, at Do you recall at any time being notified that it was a possibility that you could testify in this incident? Se acuerda que en un momento que podría, si lo notificaron, que habría sido una posibilidad que usted podría testificar con respecto a ese incidente. No. No. Were you ever subpoenaed in relation to this incident? ¿Lo citaron alguna vez a corte con respecto a ese incidente? Sí. Yes. Do you recall who you re uh, received this subpoena from? ¿Se acuerda de quién recibió la citatoria de corte? Del distrito de la oficina del fiscal. From the office of the district attorney. And do you recall when that was? ¿Se acuerda cuándo fue? Mes, un mes y días. A month and a few days.
And following being subpoenaed, or following, rather, to strike that back, um, after receiving this subpoena, did you follow up with the district attorney's office at any time after? Después de recibir entonces el citatorio, uh, recibió algún tipo de seguimiento por medio de la oficina fiscal después del incidente? Sí. Yes. Do you recall whom you spoke with? ¿Se acuerda con quién habló? Susan. Susan. Would that be referring to Attorney Opera who is seated at this table? Uh, ¿Se refiere a Susan Opera que está sentado en esa mesa? Sí. Yes. And were you at any time uh, informed of a plaintiff in this incident? Jack should have relevance. Sustained. You don't, don't answer that question. Were you at any time notified that there was a plaintiff in this incident? Jack should have relevance. The objection is sustained. The witness does not need to answer. Do you even know if there's a plaintiff in this incident? Objection relevance. The objection is sustained. The witness does not need to answer. Call ever seen? <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Do you ever call? <coughs> Sorry. Do you recall ever seeing or reading a complaint in this matter? No. No. Going back to the, the actual incident, would it be fair to say that at the time you were you were very confused? Volviendo entonces al incidente, ¿se puede decir que en ese tiempo usted estaba bastante confundido? ¿Me puede repetir la pregunta? Could you repeat the question? Uh, going back to the time of the incident at the parade, would it be fair to say that you were confused at the time? Volviendo entonces al momento del, del, del desfile, ¿Se, se, ¿se puede decir que usted estaba confundido en ese tiempo? No. No. Any reason why you don't recall seeing anything? ¿Hay alguna razón por la cual usted no se acuerda de ver algo? ¿Me puede repetir la pregunta? Could you repeat the question? Any reason why you don't recall seeing anything? ¿Hay alguna razón por la cual usted no se acuerda de ver nada? No vi el vehículo. I did not see the vehicle. Solo pasó. It just passed by.
Sorry, the interpreter needs to make a clarification on, on the, his last response. If I can inquire. Cuando te dice que, que, que pasó el vehículo, es, quiere decir que, que ocurrió el incidente o que el, 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 el vehículo pasó por usted. Okay. Es, cuando usted dice pasó, pasó el vehículo o que había pasó como ocurrió. Ocurrió, me pegó. Uh, yeah, for clarification, um, the interpreter inquired if he meant the vehicle passed by or if the incident happened. Uh, the defendant, the interpreter, for clarification, the interpreter would like to say that he meant that it just happened, that the vehicle just hit him, rather than, I believe the interpreter translated what he said as it passed by. What he meant to say is that it actually happened rather than passed by. So for that point of clarification, for the record. Also, for clarification, just just so we're clear for the record, you don't recall actually seeing the vehicle. También, si vamos a estar clarificando por el acta, no se acuerda que vio el vehículo. No. No. No further questions. No más preguntas. Any questions, Attorney Basie? Briefly. Good morning, Mr. Rakez. Good morning. On November 21st of last year, were you walking with the Catholic communities of Waukesha? El 21 de noviembre del año pasado. Accident. Desfilando con Catholic communities of Waukesha. Es correcto. That's correct. Hold on. What was the objection? I mean, you, you have to speak up. I couldn't hear what you I have, said. I have a cold, so I can't. Mr. Brooks, was there an objection so I can move on? Yeah, yes, there was an objection. I can't even remember now. Well, if you were objecting on relevance, it's relevant, his answer may stand. It wasn't relevant, so I'll tell you Mr. Marquez, if you hear the word objection, please wait until I rule on the objection before you answer. Thank you. Gracias. Go ahead. So we did answer the question? Sí. Yes. Thank you. Muy bien, gracias. You were with your wife and your son? Estaba con su esposa y su hijo. Sí. Yes. And your son's name is David Marquez? Objection leading. Overruled, you call the witness, the state may lead. Go ahead and answer. What does that mean? <laughs> Go ahead and answer, sir. Sí. Yes. You testify that at some point you were struck by a vehicle. Objection. Overruled. You may answer. Yes. Did you have any warning before you were struck by the car? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. The witness may answer. No. No. Did you hear a horn honking? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. The witness may answer. No. No. Sir, I'm going to show you what's been marked as States Exhibit 161. Go ahead. Do you, can you see that picture on the screen in front of you? Yes. And do you see the approximate area where you landed after the vehicle struck you? Objection leading. Overruled. The state may lead. It's not their witness. Go ahead and answer, sir. 
So when it's so I can lead too if it's not my duty. No. Okay. No. Well, hold on. We'll get to that later. There's been an objection. I'm overruling it. Go ahead and re ask your question. State can do what they want. Do you, do you see the area in which you landed after the vehicle struck you? Sports can be Yes. The um. I'd ask that uh, this exhibit be admitted to evidence, which is 161, and published to the jury. Objection. Um, we can't even see. We can't even see who who's what, what exactly is the state referring to. You can't even see who it is. Uh -huh. Just state your objection. It's overruled. Uh, of course, it's going to be overruled. Because it's attempt to testify, but if the state could just ask uh, a few more foundational question or questions, please. Certainly. What, when you met with the state, did you review some video of the parade? Objection, hearsay. Overruled the witness may answer. Sí. Yes. And after reviewing that video, were you able to determine a practice? the area in which your body landed after you were struck by the car. Objection, hearsay, and leading. Overruled as to both, you may answer, sir. Yes. And do you see that area on this exhibit? Objection, leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. Okay. Yes. I'd ask that this uh, exhibit be admitted to evidence and published for the jury. Objection. What's the relevancy? Uh, the objections are noted. They are overruled. And exhibit 161 is received. Permission to publish is granted. And it have been, it's indicated that that is now being seen in the jury uh, box. Thank you. Sir, the screen in front of you is a, a touch screen. Can you circle the area in which you believe you landed? Objection leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. Let me say where they believe. Either you know or you don't. The witness may answer. Say, yes. Can you do that now? That's where this fixed the whole thing. If we can take a snapshot of that. I don't know what Mr. Brooks just mumbled, but it's not his turn to answer, ask questions. There was no objection. The jury will disregard that. And this would be exhibit 161A. And we'll screen capture that. Exhibit 161A has been captured. Are you moving that in? I am. And Exhibit 161 is received. 161A. Thank you. And do you see anyone that you recognize standing in that area? Objection leading. <coughs> Overruled. The state may lead. It's cross-examination of your witness, sir. So I can lead on uh, cross-examination then? I direct your attention to 906.11 sub 3, sir. Can I on cross-examination? I'm not going to answer that. Go ahead, uh, so that's, sir. You may that's answer. So your determination that you don't have to answer that if I don't understand something? The jury will disregard the comments being made by Mr. Brooks. Judicial determination, okay. Go ahead and answer the question if you recall it, sir. ¿Me puede repetir la pregunta? Could you repeat the question? Yes. <clears throat> Do you see, actually... Do you see David, um, your son, in David, that picture? Objection. That was See. Yes. And is he wearing... So my objection is not going to be noted. The objection is overruled. The state chose to ask a different question. That's fine. <clears throat> and is he seated um, near some blue chairs wearing a blue jacket? Objection leading. Overruled. You may answer, sir. Okay. Yes. And sir, is that you laying down and you can see in this um,
picture your legs and they're hanging into the roadway? Objection leading. Witness may answer. Overruled. Uh, <laughs> yes. Now, is that where you were walking when you were struck from behind? Objection in that leading. Position? Overruled, you may answer. No. No. How far from the position that you recalled yourself to be at when you were walking did you land? Objection leading. Overruled, you may answer. Between 15 and 20 feet. So your body flew through the air between 15 and 20 feet. Is that Objection what your testimony leading. is? Okay. Yes. Sorry, I didn't rule on the objection, but it is overruled and his answer may stand. Was David also struck by a vehicle during the parade? Yes. Did he, re he received injuries as well? Objection. Relevancy. Overruled, you may answer. Okay. Yes. Can you describe what your injuries were, sir? Objection leading. Overruled, you may answer. Okay. Yes. What were they? Objection leading. Overruled. La fibula. My fibula. Y ligamentos. And ligaments. Okay. Your fibula was broken? Objection. Speculative. Overruled as to both. It's the witness may answer. T. Yes. And you had torn ligaments? Objection leading. Overruled. Did you say that in the question before? T. Yes. And were those both in the same leg? Objection <laughs> leading. T. Sorry, yes. over, overruled. If we yeah, of course. just wait when there's an objection, um, I'm overruling it. It's relevant. It's not leading. The witnesses' answers may stand. I mean, yeah, you overrule every objection. And the jury will disregard the additional commentary made by Mr. Brooks mm -hmm. at this time. It's additional misconduct at its finest. And which leg was that, sir? Objection, accent, answer. Overruled. You may answer. My left leg. Did you have to have surgery on that leg? Objection, leading. Overruled. Yes. Just one? Dos. Two. That's not going to work either. Mr. Brooks, you are Brooks. advised to stop with the commentary. No, I'm going to say what I want You called this witness. I'm going to take a break right now and excuse the jury and this witness. All right. What, you, what you're doing is judicial misconduct. Judicial misconduct. But you don't want the jury to hear the truth. That's not fair to the jury. They have a right to hear everything. I'm not gonna sit here and let you fix fix the trial because you don't want to tell the truth to the jury. Mr. Brooks, please stop. No, they know. Please, you nothing. are being disruptive. Ain't you no are please. being disrespectful. Yeah, you always gonna find some reason down. to say somebody's being disruptive because they want the truth to be out there. Man, quit it. You're supposed to be Mr. The Brooks. I'm advising you that continued interruptions will result in you forfeiting your right to be okay, present and in this court. Under what under what law in fact can you do that? Illinois versus Allen. Okay, sir. but the fourth the fourth uh, option that you made up that's not even in the uh, law. Mr. Because Brooks, you can't do that. I need to make a by law. Point. You can't do that. I need to make and you a know finding. you can't. All right, I'm going to um, excuse everyone. Mr. Brooks is being removed from the courtroom. He will continue in the neighboring courtroom. Uh, please make sure he has his objection signed and a pad of paper. So is that so that he can so is that holding me in contempt? And I will make a ruling when I. And, uh, so are you holding me in up. contempt? Is that civil or criminal?
some BS, man. Y'all do the same thing every time, man. Every time she don't want to tell the truth to the jury, somebody got to get put out of the courtroom. That's contempt. That's contempt of court. I'm not. I'm not ignorant, man. Give I, the, I, give I, the first piece quick. We'll get that on so you can tip these off. Can you yes, scroll man. that thing forward? Yeah. No. Um, that thing back up. Okay. It's right back there. So. Uh, Fifty six that. Just so he doesn't jump through those. There we go. Okay, so that's what this is all about. Thank you. What I'm saying, you can't you can't just make up no law, make up a fourth option. I, I don't want them right there, man. You want them on the other side over on the right? Where do you want them? How am, I, how, am I so, how am I supposed to move and look at my paperwork with the boxes right here? Okay, well, let me take off the, the wrist so restraints, like and then you can put them. You want them on the other side? Where you want them.
Thank you. Be seated. I need the state back. The record, Mr. Brooks has been removed to the other courtroom. The jury is not present, and the witness that was on the stand is also not present in the courtroom. Actually, he is, Judge. Oh, all right, then we'll, we'll have him, him removed. Thank you. Thank you for that clarification. I didn't see him sit seated all the way back behind a couple of individuals. Um, so this morning, uh, Mr. Brooks, prior to the court removing him, uh, had interrupted the court approximately 10 times prior to 10.19 a.m. Uh, then, of course, he was removed. This does not include the repeated commentary, either under his breath but still audible, for the court to hear, the jury to hear, and witnesses uh, to hear. Uh, related to a variety of topics, including subject matter, juris jurisdiction, misconduct by the court, disapproval uh, with the court's rulings. This very last witness was a witness called out of order at the request of Mr. Brooks. Um, as I know the attorneys are well aware, and certainly this court is well aware, under 906.11, the court shall exercise reasonable control over the mode and order of interrogating witnesses and presenting evidence so as to do all of the following. Make the interrogation and presentation effective for the ascertainment of truth, avoid needless consumption of time, protect witnesses from harassment or undue embarrassment. That's all under sub one. Sub two, scope of cross-examination. A witness may be cross-examined on any matter relevant to any issue in the case, including credibility. In the interest of justice, the judge may limit cross-examination with respect to matters not testified to on direct examination. I frankly haven't 
exercised my authority under that particular subsection, I have generally relied upon sub 1. In addition, sub 3 says the following leading questions. Leading questions should not be used on the direct examination of a witness except as may be necessary to develop the witness's testimony. Ordinarily, leading questions should be permitted on cross-examination. And during the cross-examination of this last witness, Mr. Brooks objected almost without fail, if not without fail, to every single question asked by the state on grounds of either leading or relevance. And then when the court overruled the objections, as time went on, it seemed to me that his commentary became much more audible. He was muttering under his breath and clearly showing disrespect for the court and the proceedings. Um, in my opinion, they're baseless objections. Uh, again, because this witness was brought into court on a subpoena that was from Mr. Brooks, served, of course, by the state to assist with him in that regard. Uh, but the state was well within its rights to ask leading questions. Um, it's this court's opinion that the repeated interruptions by way of baseless objections is to disrupt these proceedings, uh, disrupt the testimony of the witnesses, and in particular, Mr. Marquez. Um, this court has been abundantly patient this morning, noting the repeated interruptions by Mr. Brooks uh, starting right away at 8.31. There were a couple of interruptions continuing at 8.37. At 8.48, I think we had a total of five more at that point or so, uh, at 8.49, and then, of course, at 10.19, this court removed him under its authority in Illinois versus Allen. Um, I also had warned him, or at least at times, I would give the jury an admonishment, not really an admonishment, but an instruction, please disregard the commentary by Mr. Brooks. That it's been very apparent that any time this jury is brought in or taken out, Mr. Brooks begins making statements that are misstatements of the law or generally his disagreement with whatever is going on at that particular time, accusing the court of either bias or misconduct, um, accusing this court of hiding information from this jury. Um, this court is not doing any such thing. Um, I will make a finding that based upon the conduct of Mr. Brooks that he has forfeited his right to be present during the cross-examination uh, and any redirect of Mr. Marquez. Um, Mr. Brooks's conduct has been anything but respectful today. It, again, it's been disruptive. Um, as this court was stepping off the bench, he made some type of statement about contempt. Are you finding me in contempt? This court is well aware that one of the permissible ways to handle um, a defendant who shows flagrant disregard in the courtroom for elementary standards of proper conduct um, is to find uh, a defendant in contempt. However, I'm not dealing with a defendant who is out of custody. I'm dealing with a defendant who is in custody on very serious charges, including if convicted, facing uh, the possibility of life sentences without the possibility of extended supervision. It is my opinion that finding him in contempt uh, is not really a viable alternative to this court. Frankly, it would, in my opinion, um, it would serve to... Uh, give the defendant, um, let me restate that. Um, in my opinion, if this court were to find Mr. Brooks in contempt, it would allow him to profit from his own wrongdoing because it would result in a delay of these proceedings. I would have to, of course, 
uh, make certain findings. One of the possibilities for contempt is to hold him in custody until such time as he's willing to abide by the rules. That is just not something this court is willing to even do because it would delay the proceedings. Um, I, I am aware that that is a option uh, identified by the Supreme Court in Illinois versus Allen, but I would remind the parties once again that Illinois versus Allen was decided in 1970. Um, certainly the technology that we have available in this courtroom was not something available to the parties in Illinois versus Allen. We have a very new state-of-the-art courthouse uh, that I am operating out of. I'm in uh, courtroom uh, 13. Next door is courtroom 20. These are just the room numbers that I'm referring to. Um, as you can see, uh, we have the ability to see and hear into that courtroom, and that courtroom has the ability to see and hear into ours. I will confirm with the bailiff and the clerk that the audio is working. I'm told that it is from my clerk. If I could also get verification uh, from the bailiffs who are in that courtroom. Um, but we have the ability, I have the ability, through that technology uh, for Mr. Brooks to meaningfully participate. Uh, he does have, and it was provided with him when he was taken to that courtroom, the objection sign. I also instructed that he be given a pad of paper and a writing utensil so that he could write down his objections. Um, <coughs> or if I feel it appropriate, I can uh, um, unmute and hear what his objection is, uh, but it's my belief that the use of my ability to mute and unmute will assist the proceedings so that it's orderly, uh, that it is free from disruption as best as I can control it under my authority under 90611 and my authority given to me and expressed by the U.S. Supreme Court in Illinois versus Allen. Um, although I'm making a finding that he's forfeited his right by his conduct to be present for the continued cross-examination and any redirect of Mr. Marquez, I'll also make an alternate finding uh, that uh, the technology that I've just described uh, provides the functional equivalent of Mr. Brooks being present uh, during this case. With that, I would like uh, to have the jurors brought in. I'll have the witness brought back to the witness stand with the assistance of the interpreter, and the state can continue with its cross-exam of the witness called out of order, but on behalf of Mr. Brooks. And I am getting verification from the bailiff in the other courtroom through my bailiff here that the audio and video is working as it should. Would also like to point out that there are headphones at the table in front of Mr. Brooks should he choose to wear them. He has not worn them in quite some time. Um, previously made reference to needing it when he was in the other courtroom, so they are there and available. All right, would Mr. Marquez and Interpreter Ryan please take the stand and we'll have the jury brought out. And just for the record, I will certainly let Mr. Brooks know he can ask to come back in if, when he's willing to abide by the rules of decorum and courtesy. The record should reflect the jury is being brought back in. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. The record should reflect that Mr. Brooks is appearing from another courtroom. That should not affect the jury's verdict in any way. Um, the state may continue with its uh, cross-exam of this witness. The state would have nothing further. All right, Mr. Brooks, do you have any redirect for this? 
Witness. Mr. Brooks, do you have any further questions for Mr. Marquez? The record should reflect that Mr. Brooks is reading out of a book. He has not answered the question. I will ask one more time. Sir, do you have any further questions for Mr. Marquez? Am I unmuted? You are. You have been. What's going on? Do you have any redirect questions for Mr. Marquez? This is your opportunity to ask any follow-up questions uh, that you have for this witness. Trying to see if the headphones on. Someone say something from the other courtroom. Do you have any questions for Mr. Marquez at this time? It's your opportunity to ask follow up questions. The state indicated it did not have any additional questions. Nope, I don't got no follow up question. All right, thank you. Then, Mr. Marquez. You may step down. Thank you for being here today. All right, I need to excuse the jury momentarily. Um, please rise for the jury. All right, thank you. Be seated. Mr. Brooks, under Illinois versus Allen, which that case clearly tells me to do that, once lost, the right to be present can, of course, be reclaimed as soon as the defendant is willing to conduct himself consistently with the decorum and respect inherent in the concept, concept of courts and judicial proceedings. Uh, the court is going to continue with the uh, direct examination by the state of Detective Carpenter. Um, I would like you to come back to this courtroom. Um, are you willing to uh, conduct yourself consistently with the decorum and respect inherent in the concepts of courts and judicial proceedings? I didn't do anything to be found, held in contempt in the first place. So are you willing to abide by the rules of decorum and civility um, I would direct your attention to um, SCR Chapter 62, which has been provided to you previously. Um, does that say anything in there about me being held in contempt? Um, that does not, no. So why have, I, why have I been held in contempt? I didn't hold you in contempt, sir. You are simply in a different courtroom based upon your disruptive behavior. I'm giving My you the opportunity. has not been disruptive. 
I've put my findings on the record, sir, and I, the record stands in that regard. Um, I'm giving you the opportunity, um, if you can, uh, indicate to this court that you will conduct yourself um, with courtesy and decorum. Are you willing so, to do that, sir? Is, the, is your honor willing to tell me why I've been held in contempt? I did not hold you in contempt, sir. I've already indicated that. Removing me from the courtroom is, is like holding me in contempt. Um, I didn't hold you in contempt. You were removed pursuant to the authority given to me by the United States Supreme Court in Illinois versus Allen. Um, based on your disruptive behavior my behavior wasn't disruptive your honor the record should be corrected in that and as i recall you stating before or not you stating but us having a a, a conversation about illinois versus allen for the record at one point i could i got the date in my notes that we had it where i i said on the record that there were three three uh options identified and Mr. Brooks, I'm not going to have a debate with you on what the law means and whether you understand it or not. I'm simply asking you whether you are willing at this time to abide by the standards of courtesy and decorum that are outlined in SCR Chapter 62 and that are inherent uh, in the concept of courts and judicial proceedings, including um, making proper objections based upon the rules of evidence, based upon the rules of procedure, based upon the law, that you will not interrupt when you disagree with a ruling made by the court, uh, and that you will generally conduct yourself with dignity and decorum. But is it, not my right, is it not my right to object? I'm gonna ask Mr. Brooks one more time if he would like to come back to this courtroom and if he's willing to conduct himself um, with dignity, respect, and decorum. But for the record, I don't consent to being called that name, and I never stated that I wanted to be removed from the courtroom. All right, I'm gonna mute uh, Mr. Brooks. He is clearly not answering my question, um, and given his recent conduct, I'll indicate he continues to forfeit his right to be present based upon the prior disruptive uh, conduct. I have given him three opportunities uh, to answer the question, would you like to come back into the courtroom? And in other words, to reclaim his right to be present. Um, he has chosen not to answer that. I understand he disagrees with the characterization by this court of his conduct, but my ruling stands and my the reasoning for my ruling stands. What I will advise uh, Mr. Brooks is um, once the jury is brought back out and once the witness is back on the stand, I will unmute him so that he can properly object. Um, and then I'll rule on, of course, any objections. Um, I certainly reserve my right to use the mute function of the audiovisual capabilities that I have should that right be abused. So with that, uh, why don't we have Detective Carpenter come on back to the stand. The jury is advised to come out. And Your Honor, I know you previously uh, ruled that if Mr. Brooks wanted to come back into the courtroom, he could signal to a bailiff in the courtroom that he's in that he believes he can. Yes, thank you. He may absolutely signal to the bailiff and then they can get that information to me and I will promptly stop and we'll have them brought over. Thank you for that. Thanks. That invitation is an open invitation. Thank you. He wants to come back? All right. Um, the witness can stay here. Please have the jury remain. We'll have to clear the courtroom so he can be brought back in. Um, we'll be in recess for that.
back on the record, and I've advised to have the jury brought out. I'm glad you're back here, sir. I am, sir, actually. Especially when I bring up subject matter jurisdiction. I've ruled on that, sir. I know, but it hasn't been proven for the record. If you disagree with my ruling, sir, you can file an appeal. It has to be proven on the record. It has yet to be proven on the record. I disagree, sir. Um, you can have it. I'll rise for the jury, please. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. All right, at this time, the state uh, may continue with its direct examination of Detective Carpenter. And let me know if you need the audio visual right away. Um, I will. Okay. You want it? It should be coming on. Sir, um, Regarding the interview, we've been playing a couple um, snippets of the interview with uh, Mr. Brooks from um, Exhibit 82 that took place on November 22nd of last year. I would now direct uh, the jury's attention to one hour, four minutes, 30 seconds. Objection, I don't consent to being called their name for the record. Noted. And I'd ask that it be played till one hour, 18 minutes, and two seconds. It's noted, but it's overruled. Go ahead. <coughs> Thank you. So, what's your buddy's name? Can we get that? Have we got to talk to him to verify you're on the up and up and she's on some BS? His name is Marquis. What's his last name? I don't know his last name. What about his phone number? Uh, 467. Oh, we hope if I have my freaking phone somewhere. Four, six, seven, uh, six, seven, eighty, five, thirty one or thirty or something like that. One, one, four. Yes, sir. And he lives in Milwaukee. Yes, sir. And you guys came out here together. Yes. Okay, so he has. Well, like I said, the Stephanie was. She's a she's a older mixed lady, so she's not. You know, she, Who do you know in Waukesha other than her? Um, I know a guy named Terion. Um, I where met Terion. Um, I don't know where he lives now. I met. I've been knowing him for maybe five, six years. I just know he stays in Waukesha. He comes down to Milwaukee a lot, and then he comes back up here. I don't. How old is he? I like 34, 35. 34? Yeah. Where is he? Maybe. Give me I know. Uh, I know a lot of. I know a lot of females. Well, how many times have you been to Terry's house? Um, once in like 2018. Do you remember? It was like a it was like an apartment. It wasn't a house though. Apartment? Yeah. Do you remember what was near it? Um, I think it was like right on the main street. What's the main street? There's a lot of like, streets. Like is whatever it, is whatever it near street downtown. What what would be considered downtown? Where all the bars and restaurants yeah. and it, 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 district. Is Stephanie a place near downtown? So uh, a bunch of bars and a business district right near there? The only thing I can remember is a gas station, like a kitty quarter gas station. I think this street is like a one-way. Whatever street is right here is like a one-way. And it's a gas station like right here. Remember O'Connor gas station? It was a mobile speedway quick trip hometown. Not, not a quick trip. Not a speedway, like a, the blue and white one. Blue and white. Any schools or parks nearby your house? Something like that? Anything you remember like that? 
trails. I know the, I know that park. I know that park is is by the uh, old girl's house. By whose house? Stephanie. It, yeah. Park. What? Trail I don't. Park. I don't know the name of the park, but it has like a little creeker. Some. It was something going on out there yesterday to where a lot of shit was blocked off. I don't, I don't, like I said, I don't know about Waukesha, I don't know, but it seemed like everybody was at that park kind of walking around that creek. Like a uh, playground type park or like a... Like a, uh, like a park. It's, it seemed like a little creek or something. Well, I don't know if it, you would say a creek. What would that be? But a river? Would that be a river? <laughs> Does Waukesha have a river? <sighs> well, I know it's just a small, it's a small body of water. It's like, how would I describe it? But there were barricades blocking some shit off here there? No, it looked like in that area. In that area? In that area, it looked like a bunch of shit was, like, blocked. You mm-hmm. couldn't go down certain streets or some shit. I, I don't know, but that park is close to the old girl's house where that's why I said, look, when our friend was like, you know, your baby mama trying to get in touch with you. And I'm like, was she, like, yeah, what's up? What's she telling you? What's what's going on? And she was just like, well, she said she got some money for you. And I was like, why would she tell somebody else? That's what I started thinking at first. Like, that's like, why is you tell? Because she she'll tell me the same thing. Don't tell people our business. So then when she the put us in, when she merged us in, you out here? You out here? You out here? I'm like, man, yeah, but I'm like, what's up? Like you. Yeah, yeah, okay, cool. You going, you going to... No, not staying out here like that. I'm watching the game and I'm gone. So she tell you where to meet or you tell her where to she meet? She told me where to meet. Okay. I told her, I said, it's a gas station right here. Mm-hmm. And she was like, is it a park right there? I'm like, I don't know. Is it a park right here? They're like, yeah, there's a park right down here, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, just meet me over there. I'll get the money from you, give you a hug, give you a kiss, and, you know, I'll call you later or whatever. It wasn't supposed to be us hanging out, spending time together. It wasn't that. It wasn't supposed to be that. She got mad because I didn't want to do that. That's why I kind of figured, but like I said, I didn't see her drink. I'm not going to sit here and say, I saw her drink. I'm not going to lie on her. I didn't. But when she started acting like, yeah, you finna, that's when I kind of was like, she probably been drinking. She probably haven't just just stop drinking but you was drinking sometime today i know you was drinking sometime today i didn't tell her that i say yeah because she's acting too you know what i mean are oh, you just finna you just finna get oh you just think you finna get the money and leave and you just you must you must got some bitch waiting on you and blah 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 blind i'm like see this is why this is why i just should have just watched the game and left, dude. Like, all right. So the fuck, man. So you came out. How did you get out here again? My friend. What type of car did he drive? Oh man, it's like a Kia type of car. I don't know if it's a Kia, but it's a small four door car like that in that type of model. Okay. What color is it? Like tan. And was it just the two of you that rolled out together? Did anyone was, roll out from Milwaukee? With no, it was just us two. Two of us. He said he, he said this probably was going to be some chicks over here. You know, like I said, the Stephanie girl is an older, a older woman. She, you know, likes to party, drink, you know, watch the game. She cooks. Sure. Cool. Fuck it. Let's watch the game. Shit. I, I was only going to probably go to my mom's house and watch the game there, and my mom has to go to work. So I was just gonna be sitting here like this. Fuck it, might as well go, you know what I'm saying? Did he offer to drive? And at the same time, cool, I can get the money, you know, that she been holding for me. Yeah. Did he offer to drive? What, I mean, do you have your own car? Did he offer to drive? No, I I don't. How did you guys come I don't own a vehicle. Don't own a vehicle? Do you have any car you can drive at all? No. I have license. Do you have a I license? do have license, but no, no vehicle. Don't ever use your niece's, nephew's, mom's car or anything like uh, that? My nephew doesn't have a vehicle. My niece is 14. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so 
What about your mom? No, my mom doesn't even know how to drive. She doesn't have a car, doesn't know how to drive? She doesn't know how to drive. Does she she never car? learned. Okay. Does she have a car that she lets you use at all? No. Does she have a car at all? Maybe that not that she lets you use. No. Does she have a car in her name at all? I think she did at one point. Does she right now? Not that I know of. Okay. I'm not, I'm not going to say no because I don't know. I honestly don't know. Me and my mom just, we was kind of having family issues for a while, so we didn't talk for a while. The issues that didn't have nothing to do with, with this, it was between me and her. So uh, we started back talking when I was in Georgia. So whatever, whatever she had going on when I was on the West Coast, coming back to Milwaukee, I don't know. But I can tell you this. My mom is 60 some years old. She's never drove. She doesn't know how to drive. She doesn't even have a license. She catches the bus to work, which I don't like her doing because Milwaukee. She has to go. She works at Freighter. So she has to go. The way her bus route goes, she has to go away until like 90 second then some some somewhere she told me they don't even have a uh a bus depot thing mm-hmm. so it's getting cold as shit and it's dark out there and she's just standing out there and i was just like damn i don't want so i'm like you probably gonna have to change your route to catch the bus from downtown milwaukee on wisconsin street downtown milwaukee and then go up because i don't like her sure yeah i don't like her doing that so you just argued a little bit and then you you're saying you walked away yesterday yeah, I just told her. I told her I'm like I'm not finna. I'm not finna freaking. Be. It was yeah. people out there. They t- they would t- they would tell you I did not put my hands on this woman. I did not push this woman. I did not choke this woman. People I did not like, kick this woman. I did not grab this woman. I did not do anything to this woman. People out there, as in like just regular old civilians. Just regular like civilians. Just people regular that know you. Regular civilians. Did you meet her by yourself. I met her by myself. No one from the house went with you. No one. And there was people walking up and down the street. Like I said, it was people out because it was daytime. So it wasn't like we was just yeah. in some secluded area where it was just me and her. Mm-hmm. You, it was it was people out there, and they. But anybody I, that knows you or knows nobody friends. that knows me. Mm-hmm. Nobody that knows me. I don't know if it was anybody around that knows her, but I know people were. Walking up and down the street, people were walking around that park. Sure. It was like, basically, we were out in public. Like, if we was out in public, if something would have happened, people would have, yo, with the hip. Like, it, where was we going to go to not be seen? All right. So, I might have missed this. You, you touched on it. You were at the gas station or the park? I know the park's nearby. You met her at the no, gas station. No, I'm saying the gas station. No, I met her at the park. The gas park. station was by the area that we were in. The gas station is by that park. Yeah, I'm just clarifying. Yeah. Okay. Um, Which car were you in when you met her at the... I didn't meet her in the car. I just oh. I walked right over there. You walked. I walked right over there to the park and she was standing like right wherever this entrance to this park is. Like I said, it was people everywhere. So yeah. Anybody would see us standing out there she was standing right there waiting for me. I walked up, gave her a hug, and she, I was like, and she was just like, well, my friend has my purse, so I don't have the money and all this. I'm like, so you had me come way out here? You know, like a power play or something? That's, that's basically was like, yeah, nah, I, yeah. Okay. You know, you, you basically, you see how fast you caught on to that? And I was just like, you had me come way out here? You know, I ain't even supposed to be around you like that. You had me come way out here to meet you? For you to try to play and shit like this, I said, "No, nah, man, I'm fin- I'm gone. Yeah, so I'm out." It was daylight when you met up with her. Was it still daylight? Pretty much when you walked away from her. Yeah, it was daylight the whole. Time. This was oh. broad daylight. That's what I'm saying. Like people outside, everything going on, people walking around the park. I'm like, anybody could have saw. Anybody would have saw us talking. Anybody would have saw if anything happened. Mm-hmm. Anybody right. would have saw if. I did something to her, she did something to me, if I ran from the scene, if I did, did anybody would have seen it. Do you know how she got out here to meet you out here? Did she, she didn't say? She's apparently been staying out here. Okay. 
So we, this is what she told our mutual friend. I don't know if that's true. All right. I haven't talked to her and haven't seen her in like yeah. almost a month. That's fine. So I don't. I don't know. You said you said you you don't know where your phone is. Um, we're talking your cell phone, right? Yeah. You're not sure. Did you leave it? Do you do you keep that with you? Is that your phone that you have with you all the time? Because you seem. I don't know where it is. I don't have it. You seem confused. It's missing. Is that something? Yeah. That with well. You? Yeah. Like if you go somewhere, do you take your phone? Absolutely. My mom just got me that phone. It's my first ever iPhone. Okay. I don't know if she was using it first kind of thing, but she was just like, I got a surprise for you. No, I never had an iPhone. Hopefully we'll find it for you. And that's the number with the 610, if I had to call you after yeah. today, the 610. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. That's why I was asking him. I said, man, they find, when I told him, I said, look, y'all, I'm reaching for my ID. That's why I said, how can y'all... Not find my flip flops or my phone. Mm -hmm. I had on some Green Bay Packer flip flops because it was game day. And we did stop at one hour eighteen minutes and two seconds, sir. With regard to this clip, you you asked the defendant about his his phone, correct? Yes, I did. Did you know where his phone was when you asked him if he lost it? Objection. You said. Overrule the witness may answer. The phone was found inside the vehicle, so uh, he didn't he didn't have it with him when he was what vehicle? taken into custody. The red Objection Ford Escape. Um, overrule the witness may answer. I'm sorry. The red Ford Escape. And in whose name was that car registered? Don Woods. And what relationship is Don Woods to the defendant? Objection, leading. Overrule. She is his mother. Okay. <coughs> did you question, you're questioning about the phones. What significance, if any, did that have to you? Or why did you ask him about the phone? Strike, strike the initial question. Why did you ask Mr. Brooks about the phone? Objection. I don't consent to being caught that night. The objection's over. Go ahead, you may answer. One, to you know, um, to verify his contact information. But two, um, one, if we were to find the phone, it would help us know whether it is his. Um, and if we were able to find a phone and we know it's his, um, knowing the phone number, including make and things of that nature can help um, be used in location services at a later time to further verify that the suspect was, Mr. Brooks, excuse me, was in Waukesha at the time when these incidents occurred. And again, at the time that you asked these questions, did you know that the phone had been located in the car or you did not have that information at this time? Um, sustained us to the form of the question. What information at the time that you asked Mr. Brooks about the phone did you have about it? Objection. To the name. <clears throat> um, overruled. You may answer, sir. Uh, very little. At that point, I don't recall if I knew that the vehicle, that the phone was inside of his mother's vehicle. Okay. Thank you. Now directing you to... Um, the mark of one hour, 19 minutes and 20 seconds to one hour, 38 minutes and 30 seconds. Um, let's play that portion of the interview. After you talk to her, Darrell, um, where did you go? Do you have a, they found you, it was cold yesterday. 
You didn't have a jacket. Did you have a jacket with you? I did. I didn't initially have a jacket because, like I said, I was I was riding with somebody else. So I figured. But you didn't if, bring one in anticipation of the. I, I didn't because I figured. I'm going from the house right to wherever we're going. So I didn't. It wasn't. To me, it wasn't like I'm gonna hang out with, with y'all all night type of type of deal. We was just supposed to be watching the game, having a few cold ones, and then I was getting dropped back off home. So what happened, Darrell, where you ended up? So I know you say you're not familiar with the area. So At I'll, all. I'll lay this out for you. At so all. follow me for a minute. Um, you say you're kind of near this park. I got an idea in my head of where you're talking, based on my knowledge of the city. Um, it's right near Stephanie's where you're hanging around watching the game and Marcus is there. Um, you came out here with your phone because you take it with you. How did you end up at this guy's house? Now you said when you, you walked away from Erica, did she go the other way? I don't. You walked away. From what I remember, she just stood there. Okay, she, so you, she was just standing there like, Right, well, so whatever. you walked away and it was over. It, it was, was over. It was over. How did you end up at a guy's house asking to use his phone, which is blocks away from Stephanie's? Okay, I can tell you that based on my knowledge of the city, based on approximately where you're telling me it is, without your phone and your shoes. You understand where that's kind of weird? How did you get to be over there? What happened? Yeah, what basically happened with that was when I got back over here by old girl house, I just said, because I don't really know Stephanie like that. It's my friend's friend or partner or whatever whatever the case may be. They was getting into it about pretty much the same thing that I was getting into it with Erica about. I was just like, hey. him, him, who's him? Marcus. Okay. Him, her, and whoever else. Stephanie. Was there anyone else there other than Yeah, at her house, yeah. Okay. The few girls that I didn't know, but they had already said it was going to be people over here. Okay. So, All right, so. I was pissed because I, I feel like I just met up with her, with my baby's mama. I just met up with her for absolutely nothing. You So you, you tell me, okay, you out here in Waukesha, I'm out here, let's meet up, I got your money, and then I walk over here, and you don't have the money. Or you do or you don't, you just ain't gonna give it to me, however the case may be, so I'm just like, okay, whatever. Well, hold on. So I, when I, I get back, you're pissed, but when I get back over there, I'm pissed. Okay. They was getting into it, and he like, man, come on, bro, we just finna go, we just finna go. And I'm like, what the fuck going on? Like, I just got into it with it. Now y'all into it, he like, man, this bitch tripping. Whatever, let's go. I'm like, nah, nah, I, I, uh, no. Nah. I'm like, I'm out, dog. And I just started. Marcus walking. wanted to leave. He wanted to leave, but I ain't. I don't know what the fuck he was on. Doobie, doobie. He probably didn't even get into it with old girl, but he out there like, man, let's just go, bro. Let's just go, bro. How long have you known Marcus? I know Marcus for years. Years. Okay. I'm going to be straight with you because you've been asking me for that all along. That doesn't make sense. Listen to me, okay? Just listen to me. You go to this house. You leave. It was... That wind was cold as hell. Not at first. Well, by the... By the time it was getting later in the day, I mean, after the Packer game, you're talking 3.30, 4 o'clock, it, it was getting cold. I was outside for a while. Yeah, it was about like So, there, yeah. by the time you're talking, it was getting cold. All right. Marcus is ready to leave because this bitch is being crazy. He's like, I'm out. You just went through the same experience from what you're telling us. You live in Milwaukee. I don't know what well, exactly well, happened well, with well, him, though. I mean, I told you about me. Wait out. I know you don't know exactly what happened. But who are you going to trust more? Marcus, who you've known for years, or Stephanie? Why would you walk away, walk all the way down to where you did, leave your phone in the apartment, apparently, no, I didn't, along I didn't with your sandals, I didn't leave. I didn't leave. and go down to where you were and not take the ride back to Milwaukee? You follow what I'm saying? Right. Can you understand? I don't, know if, to, I don't know if he left and went back to Milwaukee, though. I don't know if he did that. But how are you going to get back if you don't get in the car? 
I called an Uber. That's what I did. So what happened? How did you get all the way to where you went? Because there's all these businesses in between where you were and where you got to. How did you end up at a random house without your shoes and your phone girl? This is what I'm saying. I had my flip flops on. I had them. Okay. <laughs> I just said that. Where did they go? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I don't know if when they slammed me down, they just never, I don't know. I'm knocked on two doors, not not just the one. So you had your flip flops. I on had my Green Bay Packer flip flops on. Yes. Green Bay Packer. Okay. That's what I'm saying. I did. I wasn't just walking around with no shoes. That didn't happen until after the fact. That's what I'm trying to say. Like. So I guess another question I would have for you is if you had your phone too, correct? Yeah. But okay, you didn't leave it at the apartment. No. That's why I was telling you it should have been on the grass. Remember, right. I, I described the phone to you. I said it's black. It has a crack screen. Yep. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Why are you asking other people to use their phones? Why is that guy like My you? phone was dead. Okay. When did it die? I have no idea. Okay. And I didn't have a charger. But you used it for the three-way call. And I used his phone for the three-way call. Okay. Like I said, we got a mutual friend named Michelle. Me, me and Erica do. I've known Michelle just as long as I've known Erica. She was the one that was telling me what's going on with you and your baby mama. Y'all not talking because she's trying to get in touch with you. I said, yeah, I know. I know she probably trying to get in touch with me. Well, I'm going to merge y'all. That's how I end up talking to her and telling her I'll, I'll you know, I walk over and meet you to get the money or whatever, mm -hmm. you hug, you kiss, whatever. I had my flip flops on then. I wasn't like I said. I wasn't just because the the way is he was making it seem like I was just running around with no shoes to begin with. Right. It's like no. I mean, it was pretty cold. You didn't have a jacket or sweat. Well, I didn't have a jacket to begin with. Okay. I didn't have a jacket to begin with, but I'm saying my shoes. I I had flip flops. But you had a jacket before. First I now. never had a jacket. Okay. I had flip flops. Right. Green Bay Packer flip flops. Flip -flops. Jacket. Right, because I didn't feel like I was going to be, like, where, I'm not going to be outside, but mm -hmm. I'm thinking I'm not going to be outside. If I'm just going from a car to a house, there's no reason for me to have a coat on, or at least that's how I'm thinking. I always do that. That's just like if I had a car, and I know I'm finna go somewhere, and I'm like, I'm just going from here to here. Well, it's no reason for me to just get all bundled up and do all this and that. It's when no you, reason for there me. still a bunch of people out when you left when you left her house. It was, it was still it was still daytime. Okay, it was still daytime. Okay, was still there were a bunch time. of people when you were talking to Erica. There was still a bunch of people when you left Stephanie's. When I was no 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 I wasn't talking. When you left Stephanie's, it, it was still daytime. Time. It was still day. Yes. Okay. Were well, there still a lot of people out? It was still like it was still people out. Okay. It was still people out. Um, not a lot in that area. By the park, it was a lot of people out. Okay. Like I said, it looked like something was, I don't know what the hell. <laughs> but it was a lot of people out. And it was, like I said, it was people, it was older couples walking down the street. It was younger people walking down the street. People it was just, like an event or something was going on? I, I don't know, but it kind of seemed like it was a lot, like it was something going on to where it was vibrant. Because it was a lot of people everywhere. Walking everywhere. up and down the street. Everywhere. It's people, 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 people. That's why I'm saying, like, if I got into a fight with her right there, it would be so impossible for somebody to not be like, hey, this guy's fighting this chick or whatever the case may be. Like, it, how could somebody not see something? How long was it be between leaving Stephanie's and those cops yelling at you at the door of that guy's house? Was it dark when they yelled at you? Yeah, by the time they came, it was dark. Okay. But we had been sitting out there. We had been sitting out there for a minute, me, me and the guy. We were sitting right there on the porch. We were just sitting there. To find how long? Uh, estimate. Uh, maybe all, maybe 20, 30 minutes, maybe. It wasn't long, long, but it was, it was, Long enough for, like, cause like I said, he let me use his phone. We sat on the porch. We were sitting right there, just like this, just sitting on the porch. 
Well, I caught call me an Uber. I called the Uber. I said, look, man, I, I let him know. I said, look, I ain't trying to rob you or nothing like that. Because when I knocked on the door, he kind of was like, whoa. I'm like, look, I don't got no weapons. I'm not trying to break in your house. I'm not trying to rob you. Nothing like that, dog. I just need to call an Uber. That's it. You, I'm not, you know, he was just like, okay. I come out. Boom. I, yo, I need an Uber to, yo, what's your address? He told me the address. And we was just sitting there waiting. That's how I was going to get back home. I told him, I said, I got, I got the money on my car. I'm not asking you for no money. I just need to use your phone. That's it. That was it. That was all. And then from there, we sat on the porch and just shot the shit out. I'm saying you told me last night he was cool with that. Like he wasn't, yeah, he wasn't being weird. He wasn't. He was just like, oh, yeah, I'll help you out. Yeah, we just sat there on the porch. Right. He asked me. He did ask me. He said, do you need a jacket? I said, no, I'm straight. Like, I, I'll be home as soon as the Uber come. I know it's probably going to cost me <laughs> probably like $40 to get from me. I'm guessing. I don't I don't know. But mm -hmm. probably. But I had enough on my car to where I knew I can get home. And that's that was the main thing. I'm like, I'm just going home. She can keep the money or whatever. I didn't even try to contact her further. I just was like, I'm, I'm gone. I'm calling yeah. this Uber, and I'm going home. That's it. Let me ask you this, Darrell. So you weren't out. You weren't out in Waukesha Saturday, just Sunday. Yes, sir. Right? Okay. Nothing physical yesterday. Um, like I told you, you're a part in the investigation. There's a lot of parts, right? To any investigation, there's investigation. We talk. Right. Well, this domestic abuse thing I'm telling you about. Right? Okay. Okay. So wait. Hold on. Let me. Oh, okay. Let me go. I'm sorry. You I just had a about, question, but you talked about being a you know a religious man, right? I can do better. I can definitely do could. better. We all could. I'm not. We all could. No, that's, why, that's why. That's why. Yesterday was a mistake. I should have just freaking watched the game and just yeah. fucking went home. Right. Because. I, that's the thing. What, is, what do they teach us in Christianity? Throughout that they teach us that we're broken. Right. We're sinners. Even when we're born, we're born sinners. We're broken. That's why. Psalm 51. We're so 17. thankful for God's grace and forgiveness, right? When we ask for it. Um, even though we don't deserve it. But when we ask for it, he gives it. All right? You're a father. You have three children, 18, is it 18, 14, and 7? Yes, sir. All right, you got a mama that raised you well. And a God you, you believe in. Absolutely. All right? And all of them are, here's the thing the law want, is to tell, that you're telling the absolute whole truth and nothing but the truth, right? Absolutely. So help you God, right? Absolutely. Sound familiar? We've all heard that, right? Um, and I just have concerns if I fact check that Darrell's not telling me the truth. You don't have a car, so Marcus had to bring you out. You don't own a car. Your mom doesn't own a car, right? So Marcus had to bring you out. So why did we find you with a car key in your pocket? It wasn't in my pocket. I don't even know where they said that was laying on the ground. That's yours. Yeah. It's it's it should have been by my ID. Yeah, it's yours. It's your car key, okay? Because it goes to a Ford Escape in your mom's name covered in Wonka shop. Okay. Listen, Darrell. I'm trying to be as open and honest with you as I can be. You know, I'm Christian too, and believe me, I'm not perfect. Neither are you. And I'm not calling you a terrible man. I'm not saying you were out yesterday hunting and just let me finish. But you did not walk to that house. You did not walk to that house. You did not come here in a tan Kia. You didn't. Okay. Who? You did not come out here in a tan Kia. Okay. You've got a key in your pocket to a car in your mom's name. Okay. And that key works for that car. For the love of God, Marcus. For yourself, for your family. You know what happened yesterday for the people. Tell me what happened. Well, what? With the car. What am I being with your mom's car? You're driving goofy, people called in. You drove out of there in your mom's car, the red car. You're driving a little silly, probably because you're pissed. You met 
up with Erica in the car at the park. Now initially I believe you told us the gas station, do I have that right? And then you changed it to the park. So that's an analysis. No, no I said the house was by the gas station. You, when you said, you said what was by You said you went Walmart. and it was by a gas station, that's where you met her. No, 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 no. I said I met her at the park. Okay. At a well, creek. Met her, you say that. You met her at the park in your mom's car. Red Ford Escape. She got in, you talked, and what you're telling me seems pretty consistent that there was nothing physical between the two of you. No, I didn't. No. But you met her in the car. I didn't put my hands on her. Nothing but like you that. met her in the car. Can, what's going on, man? I'm asking you a question. Just be, you were out there just driving kind of crazy. Going on, Some man. people said you were driving kind of crazy. We got reports of it. You got the key, you got the car. Did you take the car or did your mom give you the car? I know you know what car I'm talking about. I just want to know. <laughs> so, some people now reported this, you know, all those okay, people no, 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 reported that no. car driving a bit erratic. I, I know what you're saying. All I'm saying is this. All I'm saying is this. We all been straight up with each other. You knew it was more to what you was asking me yesterday. Didn't know that would sure. explain that would explain the FBI and all that, right? They're not here today. So if it's that big a deal, you don't see them here today. Come on, Kurt. We been we been. You just met in the car in the park. We been cool, yeah, man, the whole time. If I did something, yeah. if I did something yeah, wrong, that's why they were here. But do you see them here today? They're not here today. Yeah, but. But y'all lied to me, man. You made it seem like they just come for no reason. Well, here's the thing, Darrell. And I'm like, what hey, if I, if it's listen today? To for a minute. I, I can apologize. Give you a, I can give I, you a clean slate I, here. I, I apologize. Because you have lied to us as well. Because you came out here in the Red Ford Escape. Okay, that is what you came out here in. You had the key. All right? So what I want to do is try to give us all a chance to reset. You understand what I'm saying? Start over. Because you're not giving us an accurate story. You didn't ride out with Marcus in a tan car. You said your mom doesn't have a car. I just told you we've disproven that. All right? I don't know what kind of woman she is. I don't know what you all been through. But you were seen in the car driving kind of driving kind of acting a fool, okay? In basically the same area that you've already been able to describe to me. I'm just trying to figure out how and why it happened. What made you tear out of there? What made you so mad where you're like, fuck it, and you raced on out of there? And then people call, man, this guy's, he's driving around here kind of fast. All I wanna know like I said, y'all been cool with me. Am I charged with anything? That's all I want to know. I'll tell you anything you want to know. Right now. I, I'm, listen. I was. You were driving a bit. So, listen. Might be I so, be no, listen, listen. No, I don't drink. That, 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 you said that you had a couple cold ones during the game. No, nah, yeah, I, yeah. But I'm saying the hard alcohol okay. is not my thing. I was not drunk when you get the blood. And the video stopped at 1 hour 38 minutes 30 seconds. <coughs> Tata, can you explain what was occurring here during this clip? <coughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Um, the objection is noted. It's overruled. Go ahead. You may answer. Um, <clears throat> so in this clip here, um, my goal and intentions were with Mr. Brooks to start um, getting into the details um, of him driving the Red Ford Escape through the parade route um, and to begin confronting him with information. Um, about the Ford Escape key that had uh, been found in his pocket. Obviously, to this point, uh, Mr. Brooks had told us his mother 
didn't have a vehicle that she let him use. He didn't know if she had one at all. Um, the vehicle was in his name. Um, in his name? I'm sorry, in his mother's name, Mrs. Mrs. Woods, Don Woods. Um, it stated he didn't have a vehicle at all. Objection, Levy. Um, the previous objection, it's noted, um, <coughs> it's overruled. The witness may continue. Um, he had made statements earlier in the interview he didn't have a vehicle at all that he had ridden out um, in the Kia, which is not true. Um, the investigation showed Mr. Brooks came out here in the Red Ford Escape by himself, so he was in fact in possession of a vehicle. He was in fact um, driving a vehicle. Um, in regards to the area, you know, it should be known that Mr. Brooks's description of the park, Frame Park is the park where parade attend, or I sorry, I should say people in the parade, wherever they might have been, lined up. Um, they were lining up at Frame Park. Frame Park is a park that has a body of water, as Mr. Brooks described, uh, more specifically the Fox River running through it. So he was able to describe that park. Um, there were people everywhere walking up and down the street, just as he said. Uh, streets were closed off via barricades, via, via marked squad cars, uh, via police tape. Uh, so he was able to describe that. and. The way he described the area was exactly almost how the area looked um, with the parade. It was extremely crowded um, due to the people marching in the parade. Um, it was, in fact, shown to be daylight when Mr. Brooks met with Ms. Patterson and then departed from Ms. Patterson. That is something we learned, and I was able to confirm that based on how he described it. Um, and. You know, furthermore, you know, he describes and he, he, he gives the impression, Mr. Brooks does, that, well, if I was in a domestic, someone would have seen it. Someone would have seen it because there were all the people are there. And there were, but it's not necessarily going to be seen as easily as Mr. Brooks was trying to lead me to believe because it took place inside of the vehicle. Uh, Mr. Brooks did not walk to the park to meet Ms. Patterson. That was proven uh, as evidence in this investigation. He drove there and met up with her in Don Woods Red Ford Escape, which is the same vehicle after departing the park, drove along Main Street in Waukesha through the parade route. The key found in the defendant's pocket. Did that operate the Red Ford Escape that was eventually located that was registered to Don Woods? Objection. That's been answered numerous times. Um, overruled, the witness may answer. And there's never any depiction of a key being found <coughs> in the defendant's pocket. The objection is noted. It's overruled, the witness may answer. Um, yes, it did. And, um, you know, as we discussed the key more, you can even hear in there that Mr. Brooks acknowledges it should have been near his ID. <coughs> And was his ID also found in his pocket? Do you know? Objection. Yes, it was. Um, please wait till I rule on the objection. Sustained as to the form of the question. I'll strike the last answer. Please rephrase. Where was that his ID found? <coughs> in his pocket. Thank you. And the information you had, where was the key found? Objection leading. <coughs> Overruled. Objections hearsay. Um, Overruled. You want this answer? The key was found in his pocket. Yeah, how do you know that? Now, you also talked to Mr. Brooks about his phone. Where did he say his phone was? According to Mr. Brooks, at this point, the phone should have been near him, I believe he said, in the grass. And what did you take that to mean? It should have been near him in the grass. Objection. That was never stated. Um, overruled, the witness may answer. I would interpret it as right next to him, where he was arrested. Okay, that's what I was just, where he was arrested? Yes. Objection leading. Um, overruled, the answer may be given. <coughs> yes. After the defendant met with Erica Patterson, 
what did he describe his emotion as being? Angry, frustrated over the fact that Ms. Patterson brought him to the park and did not have the money to provide him that she indicated him to him prior to that she would have. Where did he say his flip-flops were? Objection. Answer. Um, overruled the witness may answer. Well, when he indicated that he departed um, Stephanie's house, they were on his feet. However, during the course of his arrest, um, he indicates he doesn't know where they went. So somehow, apparently, they, I, I guess according to Mr. Brooks, disappeared. Now, the clothes that the defendant's wearing in this video, the, specifically the red shirt, was that a shirt that was provided to him uh, by law enforcement? Objection, you're saying. Overruled. The witness may answer. Uh, no, ma'am. That's the same shirt he was wearing at the time of his arrest. Did he indicate to you during this interview whether or not he had a coat? Objection. So on the video. Um, overruled. The witness may answer. Uh, Mr. Brooks indicated that he did not. And how long did he say he was on the porch with the homeowner whose house he was arrested at? Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. The witness may answer. I believe it was like 20 to 30 minutes. The weather that evening, um, was that an appropriate shirt to be wearing for 20 to 30 minutes outside? Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. The witness may answer. <coughs> no, it was not. I'll direct your attention to the video. I'd like to play one hour, 40 minutes, zero seconds, <coughs> to one hour, 41 minutes, and 30 seconds. If we may play that now. Go ahead. Did not touch her. Right, so what had you so mad? Because you had your mom's car. Or I don't know if you use it. Who uses it? You got the key in the car. Is it hers? Is it yours that she lets you use? Let's clean that part up. Whose car is it? It's my mom's car. Okay. How often do you drive it? Um, not very much. It's the Red Ford Escape? That's all I want to know. Please. Just please. Whatever you can't tell me, I understand. I understand. All I want to know, just, just so I can have a peace of mind, just for, just for my girls, man. What am I looking at? Well, the fact you were kind of racing around up and down the street. That's the first part. Right? So, we're not quite there yet. I'm trying to figure out if I've got all my facts right for so, this wasn't a three-way call. Let's back up to there for a second. How did you come to meet her in the? How did you come to meet her in the park? So y'all not can't y'all can't tell me nothing. Well, you were driving. You, you. And the video stopped at one hour forty-one minutes and thirty seconds. Sir, is this the first time in this interview that Mr. Brooks acknowledged knowing about the Ford, Red Ford Escape? Objection, leading, and that was not stated. Um, the objection's noted, it's overruled, the witness may answer. I don't consent to being called that name for the record. Overruled. Yes, that is the first time. No. again, <clears throat> Mr. Brooks is asking about the charges, did you recall seeing that on this clip as well as the clip contained within one hour, 19 minutes and 20 seconds and one hour, 38 minutes and 30 seconds? Objection, leading and compound questions. Um, overall, the witness may answer. <laughs> yes, I recall that. And again, what was the significance of that question in terms of timing of both clips? 
objection leading. Or will the witness may answer. Well, you know, to that point, I had been talking about the domestic abuse incident with Mr. Brooks, and um, I started talking to him about driving and just driving kind of fast. Um, I had not noted to Mr. Brooks yet at that point that he had struck with, struck anybody. Um, it seemed to me, based on Mr. Brooks's behavior, reasonable to believe that Mr. Brooks, it was clear to me, he could remember something else happening. And I could sense what Mr. Brooks was attempting to do at that point was draw out of me more information. And again, as I stated in my earlier testimony, to gauge his truthfulness, I wanted to hear what he had to tell me about the incident before giving him too much specific detail. Uh, at this point, Mr. Brooks, for example, Miss Woods' vehicle, he indicated she did not own one. He had lied to me. Um, there is the risk if I start giving him too much specific information, he's going to create a lie about what I gave him and, <coughs> and so on. So he kept, Mr. Brooks kept insisting to know the charges before talking to me, but for the integrity of the investigation, that was something I couldn't, I couldn't and wouldn't provide him. Direct your attention to one hour, 44 minutes, 30 seconds, and playing until one hour, 45 minutes, and 35 seconds. Um, it is at one hour, 44 minutes, 30 seconds now. I'd ask that it be played. Go ahead. I want to tell you that you know, you're charged with XYZ. If you didn't do XYZ, we got to correct it. We got to, it's all fact gathered. I just feel like y'all know more than what y'all say, though. And that's what, that's what has me like, like, why should I cooperate when there's no cooperation with me? Nothing, nothing I'm saying is going to help me. I mean, like, it doesn't make sense to that we're trying to gather the facts. Yeah, me, so that, he did. Right. I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't make sense, you know, okay. what you guys are doing. I'm just saying, I don't want to get railroaded by people not being honest. That's all I'm saying. And if I don't know what I'm looking at, it's like, what the hell? Like, why should why should I just sit here and be like, oh, this is everything and blah, 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 blah. And then, and then people come back and be like, okay, well, okay, now we, yeah, so now we're gonna charge you with this and this and this and this and this when y'all knew this from the, the door. Oh, we don't know that we're gonna charge you. We're, we're that's, again, the fact that yeah, like, we're dude. asking the questions about you know what I mean? That's why we're... What's going on here, sir? Oh, I'm sorry. For the record, it stopped at 1 hour, 45 minutes, and 36 seconds. Thank you. Go ahead, ma'am. So at this point, um, Mr. Brooks is still continuing to try to determine what exactly, you know, he's being charged with. And, you know, another part of this investigation is it, w it was so broad I didn't know exactly what some of those charges even were going to be. I, I had an idea, but I didn't know exactly. Um, and in reality, what we wanted to know at that point is where he drove, have him tell us where he drove and why he did it. Um, but Mr. Brooks just was not willing to indicate that to us and explain that to us without us telling him what specific charges he was looking at. And this is a theme that continued over the next several hours. Direct your attention to one hour, 49 minutes and 36 seconds, playing until one hour, 54 minutes and 30 seconds. And it is starting at one hour, 49 minutes and 36 seconds. Go ahead. So your issue right now with us is you feel like you're, we're not sharing. I'm getting railroaded. Okay. I know I am. No, Y'all not telling me what's really going on. But we're not we're not getting the full truth either. I know, but I, and, and what I was on, saying was I had an issue. So when you left, you guys met in the car. You didn't walk there. She if got I, in the if car. I tell you everything that happened, are y'all gonna be straight up with me about what I'm facing? That's all I want to know. Well, I don't want to know understand. anything else. I don't need you guys to tell me, hey man, this is this, that is that. This is this. I just want to know. Just, just, so just, for, really just, for, just right for the now. fact, just for the fact that, like I said, my my girls. Yeah. No, I got you. I don't know the entirety right now. So while I'm here, um, a couple of officers talked to Erica. Um, 
I'm not the only one working on it, so I don't know everything. I got a report to a boss, so I don't know exactly everything that's going to be yet. And that part's not a lie. I don't know exactly everything that's going to be yet. I'm just trying to figure out to get to that point where I can have a clear idea and call who I need to call to get some of the information to find that all out. I'm trying to get a clear idea of what really happened regarding what hurt. And when you drove away, where you were going? Or did you not know? You know what I'm saying? Because right now, I don't know everything. Wow. Because I'm out here and, and they're out there. I'll watch you. Right, and I'm like, how long do I gotta sit in these, where, where are we at? Skigo. How long do I gotta sit in these jails before I can call somebody? Get a phone call. Let my, you know, let my daughters know. Hey, man, I don't know what's going on, but it, it's good to hear your voice. Are y'all okay? Yeah, we're trying to, we're trying we're to get to, get to that point, Darrell. But the, the question I asked you when you left, where were you? Go did you know or did you not know? Were you just mad and you left? Where were you going when you initially drove off? That's an easy. If you didn't know where the hell you were going, or you didn't have an idea. You didn't have a particular destination in mind, you know, so be it. And we've been talking a couple hours. You want to sit and eat a minute? I wish they had some Tylenol. I've been trying to fight this pain, man, since... They might, I don't know. They show... I, I, I don't actually, know how... Did you ask them? Yes. So they don't? They just said they'll see. Okay. We'll see. It hurt worse now than it did yesterday, or last night, rather. Yeah, it's going to be sore. It's definitely sore. There's no doubt about that. Oh, my God. We'll take a break and see if we, uh, we can round up some time on all of our meat. Yeah, we can see if we can. How about we see if we want me to see if I can find some? Yeah, I just wanted to. Let me see if I can find some. It's so many things going through my mind right now, the pain, the... You I'm don't not know. Even, I didn't even know... She called the, the word. She didn't call the like cops or yeah, someone else did. I know you said you, you lost your phone, or you didn't yeah. know where, where it went dead, and now you don't know where it is. If we find it, so we know it's yours, can get it back to you. I know you said it's cracked, but no. Well, the, the screen out. is cracked, but it has a. Um, I don't what's think the, it went all the way to the what's glass. The coast, so we know it's yours, and if we can try um, to return it. It, it, it doesn't. It doesn't have a number code. It has. You have to. Can you draw it? Do it with, with that. You draw it? It's dead. It's not even going to turn on. Well, <laughs> yeah, but we don't want to give it to somebody else. We don't want to give it to somebody else. Are you able to, it's like... It's a seven. It's typically it's six. The phone, the phone is dead, so... But like I said, we can charge it. I don't want somebody else to say, oh, that's my phone. Even though we're giving your property to somebody else. Wait a minute, so that sounded like y'all got my phone. If we find it. I didn't say we had it, I said if we find it. This is seven. All right, so in that direction? Okay. All right, so this way down? Okay. No, I don't know if they have it now, but if we find it, you don't have it, so it think to be in somewhere in the area of that house. And the video stopped at 1 hour 54 minutes 30 seconds. Can you, ex can you explain to the jury what just happened in this clip? Actually, <coughs> Overrule. The witness may answer. So in this clip, um, there's a couple things. Um, First, obviously, the conversation with Mr. Brooks at this point has gotten um, into the parade issue, the driving issue, which is a little bit more serious. Um, I noted that for the first time in a long time, um, he began bringing up pain in his shoulder again, um, something he hadn't been doing for quite some time up to that point. Um, it seemed and felt deceptive, as if it was perhaps a stalling tactic. The other issue became in the context was the phone. So um, the phone that we ultimately recovered from Mr. Brooks, um, 
One was an Apple iPhone. That is the code I was specifically requesting from Mr. Brooks at this point. Um, we have forensic analysts who download electronic devices. Those could be DVR systems, computers, but most oftentimes in our technology today, they're, they're cell phones. Um, and when I provided that code to Detective David Fine, who does that type of work, um, he indicated that could not be the code as the Apple iPhones um, did not have swipe codes. They should have had numeric or facial recognition. Thank you. Directing you now to two hours, two minutes, 30 seconds, and playing until two hours, five minutes, and 45 seconds. And it is starting at 2.02.30. For me to look forward to, but it's like <laughs> this woman, man, I love her to death, man. I want her to be my wife, man, but I just wish somebody could tell her that. Like, <laughs> I wish somebody could really tell her, like, man, this dude loves you, man. Why are you doing this to this guy, man? He literally wants to marry you 16 years, man, off and on. I'm not going to go mess with nobody else, man. That That's the person that I want to be with. But I'm not going to continue to be the scapegoat because you want to drink. And, and when you know I don't, be, you making it seem like I just beat up on you. Like I'm just like you're a punching bag or something. I don't wake up and be like, oh, bitch, I'm going to hit you. Or I'm gonna hit you. Like what? Mm -hmm. It's like almost like I'm demonized here. Like. <laughs> not saying you're a demon. No, not you. Not 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 your yeah, demon. Awesome. But it's just it. I feel that way because you're trying to trying to guess. Ah, I, I know you heard that. Oh my god. Uh Oh, that fucking hurt. Sure. I know you heard that. I heard it. In check. We're gonna go check with them. Maybe they'll listen to us a little bit better. Fuck. Let's check. Yet, oh my God! Yeah, give us a minute. Ah, uh, see what we got, dude. They it gotta how, how, it gotta be something wrong, man. How in the hell does it? Sometimes sprains will pop too. Yeah, but why is it hurting like this? And they say there's nothing, dude. Because sprains can actually be more painful than a break. Yeah. So whatever what they got, whatever they did, it that. hurt so bad. You want to keep the food? Why don't you keep the food in the soda and move back in the kitchen? God. Got that Tylenol. We'll be right with you. Oh, man. And the clip ended at 205.45. Can you describe for the jury what you saw here? <coughs> yes, ma'am. So, um, what I noted is that um, Mr. Brooks, initially, as we're in the room, continues to suggest that he's in severe pain. Um, and once we're out of the room, there's no more groaning. There's no more grabbing of his shoulder. Rather, there's an interest in looking at the paperwork that's left behind and attempting to use the phone. As soon as that door opens, um, Mr. Brooks then suddenly places his face into his hands and is 
suddenly in despair again. Okay, moving to two hours, 49 minutes, zero seconds, and playing till two hours, 50 minutes, 40 seconds. And we are at now two hours, 49 minutes, zero seconds. So this is one thing between me and you, man. What if it wasn't me driving? What if it wasn't you? What if it was my mom's truck? Mm -hmm. But I wasn't driving. Mm -hmm. What if it was you? What if it wasn't me? Mm -hmm. Who else would it be? That's what I'm. That's what I'm asking. Not not asking you who else would it be, bro. I'm just asking. What if I knew? Mm -hmm. Would I be asked to give that information? Well, like I said, we're here to gather truth. So if somebody else was driving that car, yeah, I would want to know who that car is so we go talk to that person. But a huge part of that is going to be your honesty with it. Right, right, right. Now I was just asking because you just ask. You know, you know, you, you've already figured out you're not a, you're not an idiot. You're not a dumb man. You're a smart guy. Right. I I see that. You know that we've been working on this. The video stopped at two hours, 50 minutes, 40 seconds. What's going on here? Um, overall, the witness <coughs> may answer. So at this point, Mr. Brooks, I've stepped out of the room, is offering up to Detective Stern that there's a possibility that someone else may have been driving the vehicle. Now, when asked about that, um, as we can see, he he pretends he doesn't know who that person would be. Um, it's untruthfulness. It's deception. Um, Hold on a second. I'm going to refrain. I'm going to advise the witness to refrain from characterizing what Mr. Brooks is saying or not saying. It is solely up to this jury to determine credibility <coughs> of. Uh, any of the witnesses and the believability of even any statements made during these interviews and I'm going to strike uh, that characterization from the record. Please ask another question. Sir, this interview goes on for another two plus hours, is that correct? Yes. Um, overruled, it's foundational at this point. It's the witness may answer. Yes. Does, okay, sorry. Does Mr. Brooks at any time ever tell you that <coughs> someone else is driving his mom's red SUV. Objection, I don't consent to being called that name. Overruled, Leading the witness may answer. Leading the witness. Overruled, the witness may answer. No other individual or no other name is ever provided. Thank you. And I'll direct you to two hours, 57 minutes, 30 seconds, playing till three hours, five minutes, 41 seconds. It is now at 2 hours, 57 minutes, 30 seconds, and as the video commence. It's hurtful. So you, you brought that up where you don't want to see anybody. Where are their nose? I'll show you in a minute. Oh, okay. You don't want to um, see anybody get hurt. Or, sorry, you don't want to see yeah, anybody he, get charged for something they didn't do. But you already brought up, too, that if somebody did something that they should be held accountable for it, and that you're willing to accept responsibility. What's going on with if that? It's, Can I show you something? You look like you tried to film me or something. No, no, I'm not filming you. That you? That's you? No, I ain't got no, um, it look like whoever. It look like Greg. Right there. I can see your face. No, that's not me. That's not you. That's not me. 
That's not you. No, I don't. I don't Durrell. Know. That's a Durrell. Hey, that's you. That's you, Durrell. Why you say it like that, man? Because we talked about the honesty piece. You keep telling me that you you tell you tell the truth when you did do something. You take responsibility when you do do something. Again. Your mama car again. Mom's car again. Next to a child, which I know you care a lot about, children. Next to a child, from someone yeah. later. Uh -huh. It's your mom's car. Yeah, I was just asking him about my uh, about. That's your mom's car that. that we took the key for from you. So, you can't tell me at this point I'm playing any games anymore, you know? I didn't I didn't uh, say you was playing games from the get-go. Well, you felt Just like last, being totally no, straight. last night I felt like... It wasn't, the, as, it wasn't you know, as fluid Lord, as you wanted. No, it wasn't the fluid. It was just... And it wasn't I as knew, much as I wanted to I knew that y'all knew more than what y'all was saying. And I felt like last night... With that whole, you know, them coming in the way they did, and because I'm sitting there in the thing and I'm watching them walk past, like, what in the hell? And seeing that, I just felt like, okay, y'all already know what y'all want to do, what y'all, you know what I'm saying? Y'all just won't. I didn't know what y'all want. It just seemed like y'all knew more than what y'all was going to tell me. It was more so like a, I felt like I was being railroaded to be like, okay, tell me this. But we already know over here what we're going to do. We already know what we're going to do right here. We just want you to tell them yourself and say you did this and did that so we can already justify what we already want to do. And it's like, I don't feel like that's fair. What time did you come out here with the car? What time did you head out from Milwaukee to Waukesha? I don't want to talk, man. I don't want to talk if, if I'm not getting no, I'm not getting nothing. I just showed you three pictures. Okay, man. you showed me pictures, but you're not telling me what I'm facing. You know what you're facing. I don't. That's the whole. You that's drove why down I keep a street, asking. You, don't, you drove down a parade route. You got a pretty good idea what you're facing. You see what I'm saying? So now this is more stuff coming out, man. Yep. And we, were, we told you we were looking for that explanation. And that's you. Uh, and all I'm saying is, look, all somebody got to do is just tell me what I'm facing. I'll tell you guys whatever you want to know. Okay, I is. said that three, four there times. It there it is. And it's like, yo. So, Darrell, what were you thinking when you went driving, driving through this parade? What am I facing? That's all I want to know. I don't have no yeah. problem talking with you, you guys. Got people, you got people injured that had to go to the hospital. So they're saying I, I injured somebody, or you're saying I you injured did. somebody. Yeah. So I'm looking at what, reckless endangerment? The very least, yeah. The very least? People got hurt. That's reckless endangerment. I don't know exactly what they're going to classify it. Yeah, people have legs broken. Dangerments where you may have hurt somebody by your actions. You did hurt somebody by your actions. So what am I being charged with? That's what I'm trying to say. I don't say. know exactly yet. You're still working that out. That's I don't know all about. of the details. You're not going to get that out of me. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm explaining to you. You're driving down there. You're, you're looking at people got hurt. People got some broken legs. And y'all saying that's me. I know that's you. That's How do you know that's you? Because I can recognize you. I can tell it to you. And that's your mom's car, which you had the key for. I can ID you, Darrell. I'm just asking you to be honest about it. Be honest about what I'm facing. What I do you think you're facing? I don't. I don't what do you think you're facing? What do you think, hypothetically? I mean, you've been through this gamut before. Right, and y'all knew I was getting charged with this from day one, so why y'all couldn't just charge me and take me to the county jail where y'all was going to take me? We because wanted that, yes, you wanted me to tell them myself. Because That's that, basically what y'all wanted me to do. You told us that there was reasons for everything. No, I'm saying, but, and I'm not you trying to, because y'all still, I'm not tripping with y'all, because y'all being straight up. So I'm not, I'm not, but I'm saying, come on, dude, if y'all knew this already, why y'all just didn't take me to, why y'all just didn't do what y'all had to do? Here's, here's where you're at right now. And you're it's right. like, you take me through the runner right 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 to get me to do something that y'all already. Can I speak? Here's where you're at. Okay, I'll tell you straight. Here's where you're at. One of two people did this, 
and I mean that from a human perspective. There's a God-fearing Christian who loves his kids and his mom that you say you are, and I want to believe you are, and in many ways you've presented yourself as, who went out, got in a fight with his girl, argument, whatever you want to call it, and went and, and just done screwed up. Or there's the malicious guy. The malicious guy who who's lied to me about his love for God, who's lied to me about his love for his mother, who's lied to me about his love don't, for don't his spin it. Don't spin it, man. But it's one of those two people, man. It's, I'm just saying, don't what spin is it. it then? Don't spin it, man, because I'm not... Which one are you? I'm not going to spin it, dude. Which guy are you? I'm the God-fearing guy that you've been talking to since last night, man. Tell me the truth about driving down that road. And you know that. Then tell me the truth about driving down that road. Tell me what I'm facing. I've just told you some of what you're facing. Some. Reckless endangerment. That's almost like saying I killed somebody. No, you want me to give you the entire case without you don't, giving you don't anything. Have to. And I'm no, not I'm not do that. That's not what I'm, I'm asking. Not that. That's not what I'm asking. Yes, you are. No, no I'm not. No, I'm not. I talk to you about perspective. I'm not. Remember when I talk to you about see. perspective? True, somewhere in the middle, all that. Yeah. That's how yeah. I see what you're, you're saying. You got me doing all this and that, but y'all sit up here and come in here. Well, not. I'm not blaming it on you guys. I'm not. But y'all sit up here and here. The police do this every single time even when you try to be look show me that guy you try to you try to be straight up with them you try to tell them the truth you try to do all this and that and they still railroad you not every tell me the single truth. time you're not trying to tell me the truth it, it, not it's anymore not, it's not even no it, it, it don't got nothing to do with that because i just told you i don't have a problem with telling you everything you want to know i just wanted to have an idea I, I just wanted to have an idea that's all I said last night. You know what I want to know. I and I, know and that's happens. all I said today. And you know what happens. Okay, you know. what am I being charged with? What are y'all going to charge me? What are y'all going to recommend? What are y'all going to do? Because at the end of the day, I'm still, I'm still, this is why I feel the way I feel. Oh. The video stopped at 3 hours, 5 minutes, 41 seconds. Sir, you had walked into this room or um, I believe you had presented a cell phone to Mr. Brooks. Do you recall that in the video? There's been an objection. Um, I'm going to sustain it and just ask you lay a better foundation. Sure. So you came in and you had your cell phone with you, is that correct? Yes, it is. Did you receive any additional information when you and Detective Stern went out of the room um, prior to this clip? Objection. Brother, is Overruled the witness may answer. Yes, I did. What information did you receive? Objection leading. Overruled. Um, specifically the photographs that I brought into the room. Okay. And what was on your phone? Objection. Overruled. Yeah, see, can you see what's on the phone from the video? Um, overruled. The witness may answer. You can ask him on cross-examination if you have questions. So the video or the photo I showed on the phone, if you look at the monitor right now, um, I'm facing it. Or is, if you face it up there, the right half. And you can, the, it's a touch screen, so oh. if you want to circle something or point to something, and you can use your finger. Your finger, not that yeah. tool. That Sorry. tool doesn't work. <laughs> Sorry, I kind of drew over it, but that half of the paper is a photograph that I was able to positively identify as Daryl Brooks, the defendant, behind the wheel of the Red Ford Escape while it was in the middle of the parade route. Um, that picture was the same one that was on the phone when I showed it to him. Okay. How do we know that? We will be able to cross-examine the witness. Um, that statement by Mr. Brooks is I'm directing the jury to disregard as it's not proper testimony. Go ahead, next question. I apologize, Your Honor. Thank you, I appreciate that. What were the other... Uh, what was on the other papers that you put down on the table? So the other papers, one of them was um, Mr. Brooks' vehicle shortly after it had entered the parade route. 
Um, that is where I specify to him he's driving past a child. There's a child uh, towards the passenger side of the vehicle. Um, another one is the vehicle where it was located parked on Maple Avenue within the city. Um, I would also note that when you look at those photos carefully, the initial one as Mr. Brooks is entering the route and passing by this child, you can see the vehicle is undamaged, where the second one I showed him where it's parked is significantly damaged on the front end. Were those the photos, all the photos that you showed him at this time? At that point, yes, they were. Okay. <clears throat> Now, he had said twice of this, I don't know if you recall, I will tell you what you want to know. Do you recall that being um, stated by Mr. Brooks? Objection leading. Um, overruled. You may answer. Yes, ma'am, I do. What did you want to know? I wanted to know why he drove through the route. I wanted to know what caused him to make that decision, what was going through his mind. Um, the evidence at that point, and this is evidence as I'm stating, it indicated his mother's vehicle drove through the route, that he was the individual driving through the parade route when the vehicle went through the route, and I was looking for explanations why, intent, motive, whatever it might be for him to tell me, and he's not, he's not willing to do that. This video goes on for another hour and 50 minutes. Did he ever answer that question? Objection. Speculative. Overruled. The witness may answer. No, he did not. Direct your attention to the video at 3 hours, 5 minutes, 57 seconds to 3 hours, 13 minutes, and 58 seconds. It is now starting at 3 hours, 5 minutes, 57 seconds. Go ahead. It'll probably go before a judge, right? What do you want him to think? I mean, I don't, it's nothing not to have him think because y'all already basically said, okay, this is what happened. We just want you to tell us this, that this is what happened so we can just charge you with this, which we're going to charge you with. Are you the good guy that screwed up or the evil guy that doesn't care? Oh, I definitely care. Okay, I definitely care. Truth. I definitely care. Why would you try to scare him like that? Just because I don't want to tell you something. Now I don't care. Now I'm the malicious guy. Now I'm this, now I'm that. Just because I don't want to talk. What other option? You know the truth. We've been talking for a couple. Y'all apparently know the truth too. Apparently, you when we came in, it was to get man, your you perspective on your side. Night. Come on, Kirk, you knew this last night, man. This was. You I knew told this you last night. Out. Yes, I told you. And it's you could have been like, "Yo, some people got hurt. We want to know what happened, man." I didn't know enough details last night. There were people out there all night, all night processing a scene the entire night until about I don't know noon today I didn't know everything I'm telling you you can believe me if you want but I, I got no I, reason to lie I'm, not, it was not, complete I'm not saying listen I'm not saying you're lying it was complete I'm, chaos I'm not saying you're lying so that's what took so long I'm not but you but know also, how it got to be that but way. also how it got see, to be I can't even get a word again because we're going round and around okay, and around and around. We're we just going to keep going around and around here. And, and you're acting like you don't... I mean, it's acting like you don't know what these are. And, and you, you No, you're making it seem like I don't care. Like I'm just this heartless type of person, dude. Well, if I can that even, way. Okay, that's fine. But look at my position. I've been in here for 24 hours. I haven't even gotten a shower, good sleep. My shoulder's fucked up. I haven't even got a phone call to even notify anybody, talk to my family whatsoever, not one time. I'm disappointed, Darrell. I'm disappointed too because you lied to me, Kurt. Because you lied to me. Talked about what Nothing, you listen, him to do with listen, one of your kids. And did not just what say, do to do with I don't have any problem telling you what happened the only thing i'm saying is i feel like you were trying to railroad me by how you went about it that's all i'm saying that's it i'm not saying okay we've I'm discussed not saying, that for about an hour so tell me what you, happened when you, you drove what I'm off saying? Uh, we're, we're not going to make any more progress on that i get i get you're pissed about that and i'm not going to fault you for it i'm not going to tell you not to be mad i'm not going to tell you not to feel like man that, that was bullshit but 
Carp, why did you do that? If that's the way you feel, gotcha. It's okay. I'm not going to tell you you can't. I'm not going to sit here and tell you how you should or should not feel about how I went about presenting things last night. Okay? But what I've confronted you with and told you today is your mom's car is out here. I've now shown it to you. You know, you want me to, you know, tell you all these things. No. Hold on. But what I told you from the start, and I did tell you this, is that part of it's a give and take. There's things I'll tell you, but I can't just tell you everything. We've shown you pictures, all right? We talked about if the roles were reversed, what you'd want my partner, Ben, yes. to do. Yeah, you did say that. We talked about that. What would you want it to do if it was your kid with the broken leg? And look. So a I want to believe a lot of people did. A lot of people got hurt. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. They really were there. No, I'm saying a lot of people got hurt. Yeah, there's people hurt, man. Like that? Broken legs and stuff like I told you. Concussions hit their head. I wouldn't want to see that happen to nobody, dude. I don't believe you would either. Yeah, yeah but you and just... And I'm not make, saying it's on purpose. <laughs> you just thought, you just thought, yo, this dude is heartless. So tell us otherwise. You know I didn't I'm say saying? that. I'm it's asking like, you fuck, what man. do you like, want it to be perceived as. Tell us how it is, then. If we're wrong, and it's not heartless, tell us what, what it was. I'm here to listen if it's something different. I'm sitting here. I haven't walked out. Come on, heart. Come on. Y'all know. Y'all know. Listen, man. Y'all know. Y'all know. If I did not talk to that woman, I would have never, ever be sitting right here talking to y'all right now. Mm -hmm. I'm not blaming her. Like I told you, I'm not going to demonize that woman. She's a good woman when she's not drinking. It's not about her anymore, Drew. I know, but and I, I believe that she wouldn't be in this position if you hadn't talked to her. I, I believe that. You didn't have to put the picture down. You didn't have to. The stroller. That's a stroller. Yeah. So a kid got hurt. Yeah. A kid. Yeah. Bad. You said a lot of people got, got hurt. Checked out. Yeah. A lot of people got hurt. To me, it's a pretty good injury if, if a doctor's got to check you out or you got a broken leg. Yeah, so what do you call my shoulder? <laughs> I'm just making a joke, but yeah. I don't know. Well, I want to believe you're the man you say you are, girl, but I, I, I'm not laughing because there's, there's nothing funny about this. No, I was just saying. No, it's not. It's never been that. Dude, I don't take my life as a joke. I don't. I don't take my life as no joke. I was just making a joke about my shoulder when you just said, you know, if it's mm -hmm. a serious injury, if you got to get looked out. And I was just saying, I had to get looked out, but they didn't say it was serious. They treated it like, oh, let's say spend the night. You're the guy in cuffs, so. Well, you said that part, not me. No, I'm just saying that's how they, not how you acted, that's how they were acting. It's pretty much like, oh, well, it's nothing broken. Well, why do I keep having this? Thriving, burning pain if nothing's wrong. Where were you going, Darrell? Help us understand something. I can do that. I just want to understand what's... So these parents I know wanna why their kid got hurt just the way you want to know why your kid got hurt. I want to understand what I'm looking at. That's it. A reckless endangerment. Yeah, that's something you're looking at, right? Just because some people got hurt. Yeah, people got hurt. Now, I just want to say this. You know that when you said it wasn't the end of the world type thing? Because nothing's the end of the world. It is. I'll tell you why. Not when you have, not when you have God in your life. It's not. It, it is because <laughs> that's what I believe anyway. I, I believe that too, but you don't want to have 
guy in your life and you sitting in prison. Can't see your family. Can't see nobody. What, what does it matter then? And the clip stopped at 3 hours, 13 minutes, 58 seconds. Sir, what went on in this clip? Overruled, the witness may answer. Um, so in the clip, I was continuing to try to um, get Mr. Brooks to tell myself and Detective Stern what occurred, explain the reasons why, um, understand you know how and why it happened. Um, I was more direct with him at this point, and you know told him that recklessly endangering safety was certainly a possibility as a charge here. Um, I let him know that people got hurt, including broken legs and um, concussions, yet um, Mr. Brooks was still unwilling to explain to us, give us the clarity, give us the information we were asking for to understand you know, why he did it. Um, you know, despite us talking about God, we, you know, I, I talk about Detective Stern and what, you know, if he had injured one of Mr. Brooks's children, that's something that comes up and what he would want a person to do if this was one of his own family members, I guess, to say if the rules were reversed. Um, but none of those things were anything that, um, made him any more willing to speak to us. It continued to be um, really demands to uh, know what he was being charged with, even though at that point he's he's being told what he's very likely looking at. Um, but that kind of back and forth just continued to occur. At any time during the time you spent with Mr. Brooks, on the 22nd or the 21st, did he ever ask how any of the injured people were doing? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name in this leading the witness. Overruled as to both the witness may answer. Um, no. I mean, for example, I, I gave examples of concussions, um, broken legs, but there was no follow-up as to whether these concussions were going to cause people brain damage, um, whether the broken legs would impair fee people from walking again, or if there'd be amputations. It, he never addressed that. Finally, directing <coughs> your attention to the video at 3 hours 40 minutes to 3 hours 44 <coughs> minutes and 2 seconds. It's a I would like that last answer by the witness strike how can anyone determine what will happen as a result of an injury how can you even determine that um, your objection is noted it's overruled may I have that timestamp again for this clip sure it's three hours 40 minutes zero seconds to sorry three hours 44 minutes two seconds all right thank you go ahead what the charges Hmm? Let's watch something for me. We're incriminating stuff. I'm already like I'm about to lose my life, man. Can I ask a quick question? Hold on, watch it. I know. Why do you Just want me to watch it? it? Because I'll show you. I just want you to watch it. Watch it. Why though? Watch it for me. Why though? Because I want you to see what's in the video. Did you watch it? Will you? I just want to know why you want me to watch it. Because I want you to see what's on the video. Why don't you want to watch it? I just want to know why you want me to watch it. I didn't say I just want you to I see what I told I you. Problem. You're not accepting the answer. I told you I want you to see what's in it. That's why I want you to watch it. You wanted information from us for sure. I want yeah. you to watch it and see what's in it. Yeah, it's a good point. It's information sharing. Yes, I want yeah, you to it's watch like it and see what's in it. It's like you, like badgering. Like but Darrell, you asked me a question, okay? And this is more than what we had before. So I am showing you more. I'm asking you to watch it. Will you watch it? I mean, I don't have a problem with it. Okay, I just want to know what, what was the reasoning. Because I want you to see what's in it. 
I mean, I'm pretty much. It's not complex. It's just, you know what I'm saying? It's just that I want you to see. I understand. I'm just saying I I already know. I already have an idea from what you guys were saying earlier. I want you to see it. It's like watching my, like, all I'm thinking about right now is. Here, we'll talk in a second. What a hell of a journey it's been, but this right. is how my story ends. That's all I've been thinking about. Like, it's Talks nothing that I want to... You look down? Why do you want me to see that card? Why? Because I think it's important. Why is it important? Is it to make, like, what is it? Well, why do? don't you want to look? I just, I'm just asking, I'm not, I'm not trying to... Raise my voice at you, or I'm not. I'm just asking you why you don't want to look. I'm just saying, why do you want me to look? So you because I think it's important. So you see what happened. You said you told you me what happened. You. you already told me what happened, girl. Y'all told me what happened. I understand my life is over. I'm trying to come to grips with that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to come to grips with the fact that this is how my story ends. From trying to love somebody, I'll never see my kids again. My mom. My relationship is gone for me, and it's like, what is it? What is it to look at? And what my life is for me to look at my life in? That's you, Darrell. Is it? Is it looking at my life ending? These are the same four. I'm just telling you that. Okay. I think it's important you see these. It is important for you to see him. For my life to end. Are we gonna are we gonna are we gonna keep going round and round about this or is there something you want to tell me? Nothing's gonna help me at this point. Everybody can everybody knows what was going on from day y'all knew last night while I was getting investigated, while I was you know what I'm saying? There's no children right there. See those kids? See that little kid right there? did stop at three hours, 44 minutes, two seconds. What were you showing Mr. Brooks? Station leading. Overruled, you may answer. I don't consent to that name <coughs> being used. At that record. point. Hold on. Were you done with the objection? Yeah, I was done. All right, it's noted and overruled. The witness may answer. Um, at that, <clears throat> excuse me. At that point, I was showing Mr. Brooks a um, video that had been provided to me um, of him operating the Red Fort Escape through the parade route. Um, at that specific point, uh, Mr. Brooks was struck members of the Waukesha South Marching Band, and um, I wanted him to see it. It was more information. He was asking for it. I felt it was important to see his reaction to it, uh, to see if he'd be willing to talk about it. And at the point where I paused it and brought the piece of paper that is, his head is now down on, um, I paused the video at a point where you could see that it was Mr. Brooks behind the wheel of the vehicle. And the point at which I paused was a still photo of that moment that was on the paper. So it was, I guess the same picture. Did you get any further with Mr. Brooks in the next hour that's contained in um, this interview? No, I did not. Objection of consent to being called that name. Overruled. The, the witness's answer may stand. On the 22nd, did you end up collecting DNA from Mr. Brooks? Yes, I did. How how was that obtained? Um, through buccal swab. So it's a they're basically um, Q-tips out of a sterile package. I used two of them: one to swab the inside of the right inside of his mouth, and the other the left inside of his mouth. 
Is there just direct your attention back to uh, this video one last time? Did the defendant ever <coughs> watch that video? Leading. Overruled the witness by answer. No, ma'am, he did not. Nothing further. All right, we will pause for our lunch break now. It's 1243. I appreciate everyone's patience as we were able to at least complete the direct examination. When we come back from lunch, Mr. Brooks, you can start your cross-examination. Um, we'll take an hour and 15 minutes, so come back at 2 p.m., everyone. All rise for the jury, please. Thank you. We are in recess.